here. Um, and let's see. Let me get my agenda up. All right. My name is Peter Olkers. I'm vice chair of the Needham Conservation Commission, sitting in for Janet Bernardo. Um, I'd like to bring uh, or open the uh, meeting of the uh, Needham Conservation Commission. I'm there. You've got to scroll around. Thursday, May 13th, 2001. Um, before I begin the meeting, I will need to read through draft script, which I guess is beyond draft script at this point. Um, as a preliminary matter, this is Peter Olkers, Conservation Commission Vice Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please state in the affirmative. So I'll start with the Conservation oh, Commission. Oh, Nancy uh, Artie? Yeah. Here. Bill? Here. Sue? Here. Allison? Here. That looks like it's it for us. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Clay? Here. Debbie? Here. And then anticipated speakers on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. I do have a list, but I understand that some people are, um, <clears throat> are going to be late today. Um, but here are the people on my list. Simon, Simon Chadwick? Yeah. Diane Simonelli? We'll be late. Uh, Anne and or David Steele? Uh, we're here for Anne and David Steele. It's Mike Walsh and Nancy Latanzio. Very good. <clears throat> uh, Artie Rappi? Here. Gregory Monroe? I'm here. Michelle Milsom? Here. Yeah. Kevin Goudreau? Uh, Kevin Boudreau, are we expecting him for 71 Stockdale? Um, he, we may not be expecting anybody for that. It should be a pretty quick review. Fantastic. Uh, there we go. Uh, Oliver Knoll? Yes, hello. And Ryan McGovern? Yep, here. All right, just wanted to let you know, we'll probably get to the RTS discussion uh, after we uh, go through the hearings tonight. Um, all right, so um, let me go back to the script. Good evening. This open meeting of the Town of Needham Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Needham Conservation Commission is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. The general public is allowed and encouraged to ask questions during the meeting when directed by the commission chair and through the use of the raise hand feature associated with the Zoom meeting app. Those that have questions or comments regarding a particular hearing will be called upon in the order that they raise their hand. So please be patient. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this body and are available on the Conservation Commission website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each hearing on the agenda. I will introduce the applicant and or their consultant to begin their project presentation. After they conclude their presentation, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment or questions. Please hold until your name is called. 
Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and please state your name before speaking. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. All right, so turning to the first item of business, um, there are no meetings, is that right? No meeting minutes uh, for us to look at? Not tonight. And um, enforcement and violation updates? Um, we just had um, 185 Brookside Road. Um, if you remember that property, um, we had agreed that I would go back um, to the property in the spring to see what growth had occurred, um, to see if the property is stable. Um, as you know, they're still working on, um, on being able to put in the restoration plantings. So we're just gonna um, hopefully meet out there next Wednesday to um, just get an update of where things are and, and where they're going. I see, so let's just update us on the process. So you Perhaps. haven't been out there yet, you'll be there on Wednesday. No, um, we're planning on going out next Wednesday. And is that also the time when you, when you uh, think about remo safe removal or car removal and that stuff, or that waits into the construction meeting? So this property is different. This is- um, Oh, this is not, oh, 185, okay. This is 185 Brookside Road. We had the enforcement, they had removed um, vegetation uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. eating and such um, within the riverfront area and the buffer zone and presented us with a restoration plan, um, which they have not been able to, um, to start yet. So That's right, this is the one, got it, got it. Yeah. So we're going out to make sure everything's stable and um, see what plants are growing. And, um, and then we'll invite them back to a meeting to discuss where we're going from here. Got it, thank you. Sure. All right, so is there a, um, let's see. So the ones that Diane Simonelli's presenting will hold off on. Uh, yeah, she had a... popped in a minute ago, but I think she left again, so. Do you have a recommendation for uh, which one we should start? Um, I think you could you could do forty three Cornell. All right. So uh, I'd like to open the hearing for forty three Cornell Road DEB file number two three four eight. Does it have a DEB file number? I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Sorry, no, it it doesn't yet. <laughs> So, okay, so our, that means we're continuing tonight. All right. I think they had some difficulty processing the checks that we sent. Uh, so I think that might be the, what the holdup was. Yeah. Okay, very good. So um, that understood that we'll be continuing. Um, I believe uh, Nancy Latanzio and Mike Walsh, you are presenting the application. Would you like to tell us uh, what's going on? Sure, uh, Nancy, I'm, I'm the owner of Horticultural Concepts, excuse me, <laughs> and uh, Nancy and I worked together, we worked on this project, and she will take the lead in making the presentation, <clears throat> and I will share my screen uh, to show you, show you the drawings <clears throat> and photographs of the property. You want to introduce it, Nancy? Uh, sure, why don't you um, share your screen, and that would be most helpful. Should I share the drawing first? That would be great. This um, 43 Cornell is a really lovely property right on the Wellesley line. Uh, we're doing work in the backyard only. Um, and here is the drawing. Um, this property is in the buffer zone of a drainage easement that is at the rear of the property. It's a, a, a man-made drainage easement. And the 100 foot line on that is, Mike, can you point out where that is? Yeah, that's the 100 foot line right there. Currently, the property from the deck uh, down to the back of the yard is mostly lawn. There's one existing planting bed right in the center of the drawing. And there are some plantings uh, further down the slope. 
Our proposal is pretty straightforward. We're looking to increase the plantings. The homeowner, Annie Steele, is an avid, avid gardener and she wants more and more plants. So our proposal is to uh, enlarge that existing bed that's there and, and make it into a, an L shape. And um, a little bit further down the slope where you see all the color there, that is another planting bed that we're creating. So in this drawing, these pink and green symbols that you're seeing, those are shrubs and perennials that we're proposing. Um, so we're proposing to do all native plantings. And I think it's uh, an addition of, let's see, um, uh, 900 and, around 930 square feet of new planting beds here. Uh, out of what is, we're taking 930 square feet of existing lawn and converting it to planting beds. We're also proposing two hardscape uh, components here. There's a very small, where Mike is circling right now, a very small like flagstone patio, a little sitting area down in the middle of the garden. And that we would probably do with like irregular bluestone flagging, um, which we can do with um, permeable joints. And then further up the slope, and this would probably be part of a later phase, but we're just asked, coming to you for permission now, is to build a retaining wall and a set of steps because currently the grade slopes all the way down from the deck, it's a continuous slope. And we wanted to create a level area of lawn around the deck. So that's what, the, what, that's what motivates the retaining wall. Um, the grade, the grade uh, right now, it, it is a, the contours are a little bit mislabeled here. Um, you see to the left of the house, it says 100 on the, on the, uh, yeah, on the contours. And um, it, the bottom of the wall would be at 94. Above the wall would all be at 98. So we are leveling this out. And um, let's see. So everything does drain down on a diagonal toward a low spot that's labeled on the drawing here. Uh, off to the right, Mike? Yes. Yeah, there's a low spot there. And that spot is lower than the grade at the edge of the bank. So we don't anticipate a lot of um, change in the drainage pattern at all toward what goes into the, the drainage easement. Um, I have a list of plants that we're thinking about using. We can talk about that if you want, but um, altogether we're proposing um, to reduce the existing lawn from 5,700 square feet to 4,300 square feet um, by means of the planting beds. Uh, we're, the, the hardscape that we're talking about adding is 465 square feet, which is offset by the, the additional planting beds. Hope that makes sense. Any que questions? We have photos we can show you as well. Yeah. May I offer a couple of comments here just in general? Please. Uh, the uh, property was developed a few decades ago. There's been no uh, incursions from water from the slope area here into the resource area whatsoever. Uh, this area is very parkable and it's marshy. Well, it's not marshy, mar I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me, it's mossy and soft. Uh, and so no water goes from here even in a, in a heavy storm. I'm gonna sh switch to the site photos this is a, a, an aerial photo from Google. <clears throat> this is the upper lawn that's existing. From this point here at the base of the slope, all the way out here is very level area. So uh, the, the 100 foot buffer is over in this area here. And so the actual area that uh, is developed is actually in the 60 foot and further out edge of the 100 foot buffer. So there's 40 feet between any development and the resource. And the, the edge of the resource, as Nancy said, is higher. And so I'm gonna go into this. Here's the view down from the existing deck. So this is a slope, and <coughs> excuse me. And down here is uh, the edge of the lawn. And so here is flat and the low spot that is in, uh, in that Nancy indicated earlier is off to the edge here. And here's, here's the view at the bottom of the hill, it's very flat. 
and this is the reason this is the as we get closer to the resource the vegetation gets thicker over here and it's native and it hasn't been disturbed and won't be disturbed uh, so uh, the chances of any problem so the here's here's a visual with the proposed law a uh, wall up in this area currently there is drainage from this area that will go down and with the wall that will stop well, there isn't much drainage, but there is a slope. And so theoretically, there's some drainage down there in the lawn, but this will stop that because this is up above. And at the base of the wall and, and the beds around here, these are all gonna be native plants. Uh, in the industry, there's been a lot of development of use of native plants for ornamentals. So we're gonna take advantage of that and we're gonna put in a lot more native plants here. And this is the, the low area that collects some perks here. And this is the resource down here and it's higher along this edge of the resource. The resource is very well developed. It's not marshy at all. It's well defined, I should say. It's not marshy at all. So that's the uh, photos uh, for the uh, for the for the project. And uh, yes, any other comments, Nancy, that you can think of? Uh, do you have one more page of photos? I have three pages. I have the proposed. I have the existing. Okay. And I have the uh, uh, perspectives. Right. Okay, very good. Um, good. So I think we're ready, based on the presentation, to go around uh, commissioners to see if they have any questions. Um, all right. Um, Allison, are those, so the plant list uh, looks good to you? Yes. Uh, any other questions? No. Artie? I just wanted to verify there's a comment about the non permeable as being made up by the gardens. Could we go over that one more time of how that's, how that's coming about? I'm sorry. The, uh, we're reducing the lawn area, which oh. obviously is high maintenance and potentially high impact. Yeah. And we're putting in garden space yeah. with uh, mulch beds and native plants. Okay. Uh, and so the existing edge of the lawn is over here. We're going to pull the edge of the lawn back further from the resource okay. and the existing, the dark red line here is the existing uh, garden and we're going to expand that and take away the lawn with this area here. Now this planting bed here is what we're probably going to do with the first phase of the construction in, in, the, in the first year mm -hmm. and they may, and this we may never happen, but if we want to have, if they want to install a wall and build an upper lawn, uh, we want to ask for that permission right now because it's it's going to reduce the impact further of okay. the landscape on the resource. Uh, yeah. And I, I certainly see how the garden adds value taking away from the lawns and so forth. But uh, uh, my specifically was, uh, and I appreciate that, specifically I was trying to understand how the perm the non-permeable part square footage that was being added was being offset by something else. What's oh, offset? Okay. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, this is some uh, a, a concept that many commissions uh, request, and I don't know if you guys do, but we are we're adding uh, 460, potentially adding 465 square feet of hardscaping. The little patio is 75 square feet, and then if you take all the area of the wall and the steps, that adds an additional 375 square feet of hardscape, bringing yeah. the total to 465. Yeah. Okay, um, we're, we're adding also 930 square feet of planting bed. So you could consider that as an offset for the effect of well, the hardscape. You know, I mean, for our, our, the words we usually use is mitigation. Mitigation, okay. So we, we usually phrase it as mitigation. I can appreciate that fact. I just wanted to make certain where this is coming from. Okay, okay so it's being, the, it's being mitigated. And again, the, the terms we usually use, I believe is, it's being mitigated by all the plantings, you're pulling the grass away. Okay, that's that's the only question I had. Okay. Thank you. Sue? Um, no comment. Bill? Uh, a couple questions. Um, you plan on irrigating back uh, in that area? Uh, we typically, when we're putting new plant material in, we typically do a drip irrigation system, not a broadcast irrigation. Mm -hmm. In this case, it will be, and then we shut it off. After the plants are established, we shut it off. Okay. Uh, so this will be dripped for the first year or two, and then there's no irrigation. Okay. 
Um, and can you just talk a little bit about um, the equipment that you're going to need to get back there and um, how you're going to stabilize, if you do it in phases, how do you stabilize it in each phase, um, post mm -hmm. construction, things like that? Sure. Uh, if this would be the first phase, the expansion of the beds, so we'd have the offset before we had the impact of the, the we'd have the mitigation before we had the impact, to use the correct terminology. Uh, and so uh, this is mostly done by hand planting. These are small plants. Uh, we might have a, uh, like a, a small front end loader on, uh, on, you know, on tracks on the lawn area, but it won't be in, there's no access gonna be in the existing vegetation, none. So all, all the access will be on the lawn areas if there's any need for it. Most of it's gonna be done by hand work and then there'll be probably be a small piece of equipment here. Uh, and uh, this is done by hand. We expand these beds by hand. Okay. Uh, and so if there's any mitigation needed, I mean, if you'd like, we of course put a, a hay bale barrier, silt fence arrangement in this area here. Yeah, it's on the drawing. Is there any invasive species in the back of the drainage area that I want to deal with now rather than later? I haven't seen it in spring. We were there in fall. Um, in the fall, I didn't notice any horrible woody invasives back there. Yeah, I was there last late. I'm sorry, I was there late, late last summer, and I'm very familiar with Phragmites and and uh, and Fallopia japonica, and so uh, so no, there's nothing like that there. No further questions. Thanks. Very good. Uh, any um, uh, members of the audience? Um, there was one hand that was uh, raised uh, just intermittently that's currently not raised. Um, but if there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak. Okay. Looks like a hand is raised. Yeah. So I will uh, allow you to talk just a moment. And you should be able to unmute yourself. All right. And please state your name for the minutes. Hi, this is Sheila Corkill. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we just live on 22 Colgate Road, um, which is um, basically, we, we just got the notice. Um, and um, so we kind of, our backyard looks out um, to the Steels property. So we were just, you know, wondering what the project was going to look like. And um, uh, it looks beautiful. Uh, my one question would be the retaining wall. Um, from our property, 22 Colgate, are we going to be able to, to see the retaining wall or will there be, you know, like, for instance, when the leaves are down, will there be much of a change from, from our property, from what we're looking back on? Because right now it's all, you know, it's all wooded. Um, we really can't That's see right. much of the neighbors. You're, you're in this area, I believe. Is that correct? So your view is down this way? Uh, we're at the end of Colgate Circle. Um, so we back up so we're looking uh the back of our yard can kind of looks out to the steels um and i'm just wondering like if like during when the leaves are down is right. is like is the retaining wall kind of something that is large or um uh, we're just trying sure. to get a better yeah yeah uh this wall that we have here if it's ever built will be built with Pennsylvania field stone, which is small stones stacked up. It, yep. doesn't have a, it doesn't have a cap on it or anything like that. So it doesn't look like concrete. It's very natural looking and it blends in. So in this area, there's a lot of wooded plants and material that's not gonna be disturbed. So even when the leaves are gone, the, the wall is the same color as the gray color of the trunks of the trees. So it's really not gonna be noticeable. It'll be very, very low key. Uh, and this, uh, this, uh, is actually close to the current grade that's up here now. So it's not gonna stick up 15 in feet in the air or anything like that. It's just very low key. Okay. Um, and I know that that drainage um, behind the property, um, uh, that easement drainage um, is kind of in between both of our houses. Right. Um, that shouldn't be really affected at all? Correct, not at all. Okay. Zero. Okay, and when um, is is this something that is um, going to start this summer and or? Yeah, like we hope we we hope to do the planting in June. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you very much. 
Sure. Thank Very you. low key. We're not going to disturb anybody. If there's anything wrong, please let us know. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, you know, we wait for spring all year. So um, yeah, it's a beautiful. It's a beautiful spot. It looks like a beautiful project. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. All right. Uh, so we've done the rounds. People have had and their questions answered. Um, so are we ready to continue until we have a DUP file member? I just have one question. Sure, I'm sorry. Question. Oh, no worries. Um, I was just wondering if you had, had um, forwarded us the green cards for the abutters or... Clay, I, I think I sent you those. Did I, did I not? I believe they're in the, in the application packet. I have, I have the originals. I sent you a copy. Do you want the originals? Um, no, I just wanted to make sure that we, we just had it recorded. So thank yeah. you. That's and all I have. Far, as far as the checks go, Needham's, the checks that we sent, we sent three checks, two to Needham. And one right. of the state, they were all sent out at the same time. The two for Needham have cleared. Uh, and so. Right. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're working um, on, on the other check um, for DEP, I think. Yeah. All right, Allison, you had a question? A quick one that's not really related to, you know, accepting or anything, but the, um, the bed at the bottom of the stairs, you don't really have a landing. Are you really going to build it like that? Ah, uh, no. Kind of like bump right into <laughs> no, the No, we're seat. not. No, we're not. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, uh, if, and they're undecided about whether they actually want this wall or not, because a lot, it's an expense for them. Uh, and so yeah, it's like five feet tall. Yes. And most of that's in the ground. And so uh, the, uh, the planted area here will go forward this year. That's what I thought. Yeah. Right. It just didn't and look so, like it was done right. Yeah. And so. Okay. Okay. That's uh, it. All right, thank you. That's good. So, so if we approve this and there are changes to the plan, then you come back for a minor modification. Yes, correct. Okay, very good. So, uh, any other questions? Raise your hand. Okay, so um, can I get a motion to continue this hearing? So I moved. guess in two weeks. So moved. Right, it's to uh, May twenty seventh. May twenty seventh. Uh, may I ask a question, please? Sure. Uh, uh, could we have a preliminary approval vote uh, pending the uh, receipt of the uh, numbers for the, from the state? Uh, well, we're unable to, to close the hearing and to and then to, to issue an order of conditions. I think you got, um, so to that extent, I don't think we're allowed to move forward. Um, no, I understand that. But in terms of, Commission, I think you heard what we had to say. Yeah. Okay. And you know, I don't, I don't see anyone requesting changes. Um, so should we be available to appear at the? Oh, 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 at the next one. Oh, uh, that's a good question. There may be a different subset of people here. Um, Why don't we let them know? Um, can we let you know a few days before? That'd be great. Sure. Okay, we can do that. Okay, very good. We'll Thank tell our legion of, of support staff to be ready and... Sounds right. like a plan. So let's move on to the continuation. So Thank Artie, you very much. Appreciate it. Artie, you, you. Mo you moved? Yes. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, so I'll go through. Uh, all in favor. Uh, Sue? Um, aye. Allison? Aye. Artie? Aye. Bill? Aye. Peter? Aye. All right, very good. So continued for two weeks. Okay, and we you. may or may not see you then. Great. Very good. We'll hear from you. Thank you very thank much. You. All right. So, um, is Diane here? Yeah. Looks like. I am, I am here. All right, so there are two things in front of us that you're presenting tonight. Um, okay. And I guess we're gonna start with the continued notification, uh, notice of intent. So um, I'd like to open the continued notice of intent for 391 Dedham Avenue, DEP file number 234862. This one we've 
had really the hearings on, but there's still some loose ends. Correct. So um, a couple things we had to um, uh, adjust the calculations on the plan uh, because when we changed the second patio to a pervious patio, that calculation hadn't been updated on the plan. Um, additionally, we did check uh, on that species for um, uh, uh, the question that we had last week. So we changed that to a pussy willow. Um, and the one thing I think we're holding, or we don't have quite yet, and I don't know if this is gonna hold us up for the order, but to close the original order, uh, we were gonna uh, put the deed restriction. We have not heard back yet from uh, town council. So we're waiting on that portion. So we're hoping with those changes made, uh, additionally, we also, um, submitted the waiver form and the fee, and we're also gonna request the uh, fee be waived. Um, actually, that was the other item, but um, again, with the fact that we have no comments yet from legal counsel, we're hoping we could at least issue the order and, um, and take care of the second part when that comment or those comments come in. Okay, very good. Um, just to be thorough, I'll go around and ask the commissioners if they have any very last minute questions. Sue? I, I, no. <clears throat> Allison? Allison? No, no. Sorry. Artie? Sorry. No. Bill? No for other questions. No. All right. So the, so the question in front of us is whether the commission feels comfortable closing this um, without the um, COC being completely cl closed also. Because mm -hmm. I think that was a hanging point or whether that was actually ultimately gonna make a difference in terms of our decision. And Deb, we, have, we do have the authority to be able to do that, right? Yes, you can. Um, Clay and I had done a site visit with Diane and I found um, the plantings um, to be, um, to be healthy and, and, um, we were, we were happy with the plantings. So the, really the only part that we're waiting for is approval from town council, um, which I don't think we should put the burden on the applicant, um, based on their timeline. Um, so I would recommend issuing and, um, and hopefully we'll have comments for our next meeting. Um, okay we can close the previous. Fantastic. All right, so um, just to be thorough, any audience members with their hands up? There's no hands currently up in the audience, no. Okay, fantastic. So uh, motion to close. I move. Second. A second. That's Sue. All right, all in favor, Sue? Aye. Allison? Aye. Artie? Aye. Uh, Bill? Aye. Myself, aye. So we've at long last have closed uh, <laughs> this particular hearing. Uh, and I think there's a draft uh, order mm -hmm. that we'll be looking at later. Um, and, and you've requested the waiver. Both the waiver and the waiver of the fee, is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, very good. Now, the, um, with closing of the original order, um, will, Deb, will you get a hold of us when that comment comes in? You'll send it around? Yes, I will definitely, um, and let you know if they want any revisions or anything on it. Okay, the Chadwicks, I'm sure they have an attorney that will take a look at the comments. Yeah, that okay. she's lined up ready to go. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. I know they just had um, had um, town uh, meeting, so I think he was pretty busy with that. So hopefully we'll get something um, for the next meeting. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, next on the agenda, I mean, I think. Right, I've I guess got, we... You mind if I ask a quick silly question? What What does that mean now? Do we need to wait for a form or a document, just confirming the decision, or? Yeah, there's an order of conditions that we need to uh, vote on. Um, 
and and then that's the document that drives uh, the rest of the process. Um, okay. It talks about site visits and gives you very um, uh, explicit instructions about what you can do and what you can't do and, and, okay. and that sort of thing. Yeah, once it's issued, it needs to be recorded at the registry and there's a 10 day appeal period that you can't do work. Okay. Um, but we'll go over that once it's issued and we'll have a site visit with you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Can they start with the erosion control, Tim? Yes. Okay. All right, fantastic. All right, so um, might as well move to the other one that Diane is representing. So um, I'd like to open the hearing for 50 Lehigh Road, DEP file number 234864. This is a notice of intent. Uh, Diane, can yeah. you describe the project? Sure, if I could share the screen. Um, let's see, we're gonna start with the, um, uh, share. We're gonna start with the, um, the, planting plan, uh, the planting plan that we have here. Um, this plan is done by Paragon uh, and they have uh, a variety of plantings that hug. Can you all see the plan? Okay, so the plantings that they have basically uh, go around uh, the. Uh, part Dan, of the can, can, can I stop you for a moment? So, this, as far as I know, was not included in our packet. We had a uh, we had one plan. I don't. Um, it, yeah, I, think, I don't think we. Re I don't think we received it electronically. I, I did get a hard copy of it. So that uh, was, yeah, that was my error. I do apologize. Okay. Um, so would you like me to start with the other plan? Uh, yeah, just for an overview and then we can move to the planting, I think. Let me get that plan, okay. So uh, this plan here is the plan that we had put together. And basically with this plan, you will see that we have um, the current edge of lawn, if you can see my mouse here, um, that runs down the 50 foot we have a, um, this, let me just take a step back. This house was built in 2016. With that, we were in front of you as well for the existing house. Um, the homeowner has come back to you um, to expand the lawn a little bit in the back. Uh, again, outside of the 50 foot uh, buffer to the bordering vegetative wetland that we have that runs along this easement, um, kind of meanders around the easement in, in, in portion and, and comes up a little bit into the property. Um, so with that, the homeowner, again, is, a, is hoping to expand the lawn through the back part of the property here. And let me just zoom out a little bit more. Um, so there is a, whoops, sorry. There is um, a portion of the lawn that, oh goodness. I really should put my glasses on here. I'm sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button. <laughs> So we have a portion of the lawn uh, that we're hoping to expand upon in the back here. Yep. Um, currently there will be three, four trees to be removed uh, in, in this project and four down here that will be deadheaded um, or snags if you would. Um, the trees, uh, the tree in the back here, uh, I talked to the arborist about this one. We were gonna leave this as a snag. It's a relatively large tree he didn't feel comfortable leaving even a six or eight foot snag. Um, the family that, and, and part of the reason why the family, uh, the, the, the homeowners ex, uh, looking to expand the lawn is because they have five children and they really want room for the kids to play. Um, and with that snag, he just felt that that tree is too big for a snag and too hazardous. He said it's very rotted. Um, so that one uh, where, where we propose as a, uh, uh, complete removal. Um, Do you mean cut to the ground or take correct. out? Okay. Cut, cut to the ground. We're not going to de-stump um, okay. this one here. These obviously would be because that's within the existing proposed lot. Okay. So, so can I just stop? So this is helpful to, to understand because I think in the description, in the notice of intent, there wasn't 
explicit language that we're expanding a lawn. And, and I suspected, given the plans, that that's what you were doing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I mean, it's nice when that's explicitly laid out, because I think it helps commissioners understand what the okay. project is really about. It's not about the planting, it's about the expansion of the lawn and mitigation for, for that, for that uh, expansion. Um, those three trees in that area right now, so, the, so currently the lawn, and this is all within the 100, I, I mean, and okay. outside the 50, I understand. But uh, right. right now, those those are the three. It's just those three trees that are that are keeping you from, or is there other brush or other natural there's a, growth? There's, down? there's some understory, um, very young pines, um, uh, within and very uh, some again some yeah some understory vegetation. So is this similar in character to the to the woods? Uh, between the 50 and the 25? I mean, is it, it, is it kind of a continuation of that woods um, I, I would, or is it, is it different somehow? Um, I, it, it's less dense, a little less dense, not, it's, it's, it is somewhat similar, but it's not as dense. Uh, Deb and uh, Clay, I think took a site walk. Would you agree with that? But it is very similar. Um, yeah, I can actually pull up uh, some photos from from the site visit if you'd like to see. Yes, please. So while he looks that up, if, if I could just talk a little bit more about the rest of the project. Um, outside of your jurisdiction, they are adding a pool um, with that. Uh, they're expanding the patio which we have this little itsy bitsy little corner over here that five square feet of additional impervious that they would be adding because this all is currently um, patio but there's a portion of it that is not additionally they're going to regrade this which are um, this these steps are actually going to be lawn uh, so they're going to be lawn steps um, with um, uh, down from uh, the grade that's currently there down to the existing lawn um, and again, we're again outside of your jurisdiction, but we are moving the infiltration system uh, back beyond the pool area. Um, and additionally, there's a, a pervious uh, paver patio that's going down in this portion of, of the house as well. Um, for the pool, um, they, uh, and this is where the waiver comes in, uh, for the well, and the plantings as well, but in uh, for the pool area, they are um, hoping to add a fence through most of the property um, up this uh, north uh, lot line in the back and then down the front, come to the easement, come down and across. So again, that um, that is uh, within uh, uh, the 25 foot and it crosses over the wetlands, primarily for, um, again, uh, for the uh, family to explore and, and, and um, basically play within that wetland area within a, the, the safety of the fenced uh, yard. So that is the extent of the property, but Clay, uh, Clay, I don't know if you have those pictures. Yep, I will take over screen sharing for a moment. Sure. So uh, this is a photo just looking from the top area. Um, on the left, you can see the pool that's outside of the buffer zone. Um, and this is that area that they were speaking of. There's the play set that was also going, I think was on the, the plans to be relocated um, or maybe not, but um, this is that area back here. And then if you look out, this is in the direction of the wetlands. So both of these were taken from the patio, the existing patio up closer to the house and out um, and you can also see there are birdhouses as the, the markers from the previous filing that run kind of along this side. And then they, they extend further along that area. Uh, 
All right, so the area that's going to be cut down is directly behind the playset right now? Correct. And, and, and I'm sorry, there's only three trees in that area that are coming down? Three trees over, over the six inch diameter, yes. All right, I guess perspective is tricking me to think there are more trees in that area then. Well, some of that, uh, I mean, there's some of that is outside of the jurisdiction because only half of that yard is within the jurisdiction. So that could be deceptive. I this see. There are more trees there, but it's not all within the 100 foot buffer. I understand. Um, so, so the plan is to take that all down, including well, I mean, no, not all of it's coming of jurisdictional or no, it's not. It, it, if we could go back to the plan, there are uh, there is a buffer to the left into the rear that will continue to stay vegetated. Um, let me just get back if I could go back to my screen sharing here. So again, we have uh, the lawn area, uh, which is going to be coming around here. So a lot, a lot of the edge, you'll see, uh, you know, it meanders over here. A large portion in the back will stay wooded. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. So again, it is, it is a little deceiving in the picture, but um, those are the only three trees that will, um, that are over the six-inch diameter. Okay. Um, all right. So if I can move on to the uh, planting plan. Actually, uh, before you do that, mm -hmm. um, the trees that you're proposing to snag, mm -hmm. uh, they were described as hazard trees uh, in the notice of intent, though there wasn't any detail beyond that, um, other than saying that the arborist, you named the arborist who made the judgment. Um. Um, um, but I don't believe in, in the notice that we received that actually we had the arborist report uh, okay. talking about the condition and the species and, and I can definitely and why, send that along. And why they're hazards. I mean, if they're just big trees. No, no, some of them are um, if splitting. They're dead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, that's... yeah. Um, yes. And I will, um, let me see, I do believe, uh, well, as we move through this, I, I can possibly pull that up as we talk about other portions of the project. Um, but yes, there are trees that are actually standing dead. Uh, one of them is dead. I think one is split. Um, so, and, the, and this is motivated by the idea that children would be in the woods playing. Absolutely, yes. They, their children run, range from the age of 11 to newborn. So it will be many years you know, of playing in that area. Okay, and um, and you are, I mean, that this plan does put a fence around the 5025 and, and through the wetland. Correct. All right, so that's something that the commission uh, needs to consider as well. Okay, very Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so on to the mitigation. So extensive okay. planting plan, I understand. Yes, so here we have the, the planting plan again. Uh, we will um, add within that area around the proposed lawn. Um, so if, if I could zoom in a little bit to this area within the, it's the planting area is within the 25 to 50 foot buffer between 25 and 50 feet. Um, so again, the planting area comes right around here, down and around um, all the way through uh, this area, basically to the back portion of the house. Um, so with, with that, the, um, the plan adds uh, a variety of plantings, which we have um, service berry, Let's see, we have some dogwood, western aprovite, redbud. Um, so that's 13 uh, trees that he's adding. We have a variety of shrubs, and then we have some ground cover as well, all within uh, the 50 to 25 foot buffer 
uh, along the side of the uh, proposed lawn area. And again, those are to um, uh, mitigate for the trees, uh, add to the buffer to enhance the, um, the habitat. Um, there's food uh, plants uh, that will help for forage as well. Um, so there's a variety, we would be uh, improving the habitat and um, beefing up, if you would, some of the uh, vegetation in that area. All right, um, Deb, and, Deb and or Clay, um, you visited the property. Was it both of you or just Clay? No, it was just Clay this time. It's me. So Clay, uh, in your judgment, is does does the buffer need these extra plantings to is is is, is this a value? Um, how do you mean? Sorry. Well, I'm I mean I mean just just eyeballing it a moment ago, it looked like a natural area. It, it seemed, you know, not unlike the areas in that in that part of uh, the town. Mm -hmm. um, what, you know, what um, what would be the special reason to to do additional plantings? Um, I think when you look at the photos uh, that I had up, you probably you probably noticed there was um, quite a bit of. Uh, very very small pines growing in around the edge of the the yard beyond that um as diane mentioned it is relatively sparse uh it's not not as dense and the understory is not so thick beyond that initial edge of kind of edge of habitat so i definitely think that this would be beneficial um if you approve the edge of lawn to be expanded back towards the end of the property i think that uh similar to the discussion that you had at seven, uh, 766 Chestnut Street, I believe it was, where there was a mixture of shrubs and trees to restore an area to, to create more of an edge habitat. I do think that it adds value there. Um, the plantings to the right of the house, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm entirely equipped to say how much value that does or does not add. I think that you may be opening up um, you know, if you approve the removal of the hazard trees, you may be opening up enough of that canopy that it, it's going to grow in and beyond the initial first couple of feet in the lawn, the understory is not real strong there. So I think in some ways this gives you the ability to choose what is being established there versus what may be there. Um, I didn't notice a high presence of invasive species, but um, they may have been just behind the pines. I did not look real closely with that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Clay. All right, so I will go around and, and uh, ask commissioners if they have any uh, questions or comments. Um, Allison, um, we have another plant list. Yeah. What do you think? I have, I have, a, I, have a, I guess, three questions. What is it in this plan that I, that's up right now? Are the big circles existing trees? Um, yes, let me just get back to that. I, um, the reason I ask because you're planting, like for instance, the one that's near the lawn, you're planting a lot of stuff under this tree. The one that's where there's O2, B, B, T, 2, A. And that in itself is a disturbance. That's just one thing. The second thing is that the three trees that are in the lawn area, the new lawn area. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested if that white oak really is a hazard. Usually white oaks aren't hazard, especially not an 11 inch diameter. That's a small tree. So oh, no. I have a suspicion that you just, they just don't want a tree in the middle of the lawn. No, no, and no. The that's one's... important. It's important to know why those, I mean, I mean, if that's the reason, then you should just say it. No, you just don't want a tree in the middle those trees are not hazardous. The only one that's hazard um, that we're removing oh. is the one in the rear. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. All the so other trees. There's the lawn. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. And the, the, the second thing, the last thing is that, you know, all things being equal, if this was, if this was in a flat site, nowhere near any, you know, wetland, then I would say it's a very nice planting plan, although you might be disturbing some existing trees by planting so much stuff under it. Um, 
but about 50%, it seemed just from a quick look at, are not native plants. And it doesn't matter if it's out of our resource area, if you want to use hydrangeas and things like that, but, um, and lilacs and whatever, um, you know, and daylilies. I mean, I love them, but if it's in the resource area, they really need to be native. Okay. Um, it just, it's just that simple, even though they're nice plants. Okay, that's it. That's my comments. Yep. Thank you. Artie? No, I, I don't have any. Sue? So there's nothing going on within the 25 foot. No, from the 25, no. Between the 25 and 50 is where the plantings are. Well, I shouldn't say nothing. We, we, that's where we will be doing the, um, um, uh, the, the fence, the fence that will be going in. That's the only work within the 25. And within the wetland. Mm -hmm. Yes. The fence will go across the wetland. I just don't see the fence. It's it's the little if, if you zoom, let me just zoom in. Hold on. Um let's see. Let me get oh, was that. that yeah, let me zoom in a little 20. bit more for you here. Share. So if we zoom in. It's, it's this line that comes around here. It's so it comes down and through here, comes down across. And then on the other side in the rear, it basically follows again, the, the property line back down to the fence. I mean, I'm sorry, to the pool, back okay. into the that corner of the house. Okay. Yeah, so back to the trees though, the trees in the middle are, these three are not hazardous. The only hazards coming down uh, are these four here. Um, and, and again, the reason why this one is completely being removed is because of the hazard uh, state of the, the tree, which again, I will pr provide you um, with the, uh, with the arborist report. Additionally, and I don't think I mentioned this, but we do have additional birdhouses going in, um, depicting one, two, three, four, and I believe we had one fifth one up here. No, I guess just four coming around. Um, you know, we would, uh, as the homeowner has continued, you know, and kept in place the existing uh, birdhouses from last uh, order, demarking the current line. I have a quick question, Diane. Mm -hmm. Do you know um, if birds are actually using those bird houses? Um, or the homeowner. I, uh, I'm just curious. Yeah, I don't know. I can I can take a look when uh, a closer look when I go out there. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, bird houses are nice ornaments, uh, but it's also nice if they get used. Yes. Um, well, yeah, so, so bee houses. <laughs> so I guess the fence is the next thing uh, to talk through carefully. And and let me just ask Deb: Is this done? Do people put fences across wetlands? Um, generally speaking, I I don't remember us ever approving a fence through the wetland. It seems like an odd request, given how much we want to protect the wetland, to put mm -hmm. something through it rather than around it. And that was is, part of why we chose the fence that we chose. Again, the chain link uh, to allow you know the small creatures to, to maneuver through. And again, we we're, uh, we do have the children that we're hoping um, can explore and. In play. Well, you want them in the wetland, or yeah, she wants them coming in muddy. Uh, muddy, Michelle said. The homeowner is here with us tonight. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, you know, under do not disturb, we understand that people can use their own property. Uh, on the other hand, you know, it's not a play field, 
um, and I mean, needs to be respected as a natural environment. Um, and so, I mean, my 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 initial and and once again, we didn't see the planting plan until this evening. So I think this sure. is still a lot for us to digest. Um, but it has the character of someone trying to put a garden in an area that we told them was do not disturb um, and and was supposed to maintain a kind of a, a natural character because you needed to mitigate the expansion of a lawn and didn't have anywhere else to put things and uh, somehow want to, to, you know, continuing the landscaping into the do not disturb area. And, and, I, and I'm sorry if that's not justified, but um, that's the impression that I get from this proposal right now. Um, and so I'm not sure, you know, what the, what the proper response is. Um, I don't know if any of the commissioners have some thoughts about this. I do. Yes, Sue? I was just going to say, no, I don't think a new fence should go into the 25. I don't, I don't ever remember um, anything um, such that allowed, except if there were original footings already, if there mm -hmm. were original fence already, original footings. But I've never known for a brand new fence to go plop right into the 25 foot. Okay. I mean, this goes into the okay. wetland itself. It's not even the 25 foot. It's no, right. That's running what... across the wetland. Right. Again, the other, the other, and and, and again, it's it's a function of she she does want um, safety for the kids, um, and she, uh, you know, would like them to explore. Additionally, and you know, we were talking on the phone this morning, Michelle and I, and just yesterday, I mean, this, I don't know if many of you know this area, but basically this part of uh, Lehigh is a dead end. And two, two reasons why she would like a fence up close that way is because A, we had just yesterday, she had a truck back up over here and looking to dump uh, material, um, you know, cuttings, A, who knows who they are, and B, she did go out and, uh, and address it, and she asked what they were doing, and they said they were just parking there, but they had a truckload of brush. So, you know, they, she, she is concerned for strangers. Uh, additionally, um, you know, she does, uh, unfortunately, the people across the street who are very friendly, but Somehow they must have a company where they have a lot of packing uh, materials and a lot of that flows out of their trash and into their, their yard. Um, so there's a, there are other reasons for the fence and this was what we kind of came up with for a best fit. If the commission, um, it, it's again, without blocking out the yard for the pool fence, this was something that we came up with. It wasn't, ideal, obviously, because there are wetlands, but what, how can we make this work for the family and for the safety of the fam of the children um, and to clean, to keep the wetlands clear of this debris that blows from across the street. So I guess there, you know, it is unusual, um, but these are the hurdles that we're trying to accomplish or trying to um, make, you know, uh, adhere to, like we're trying to, we're trying to, keep the kids safe, keep the things out of the wetlands, um, you know, and how, how do we do that and still allow for them to play and, you know, enjoy um, and explore and discover what is out there for this wetland. Yeah, so, so, right. So you're fencing the kids in, is that is that the idea? I mean, I know yeah. you need a fence because you have a pool. That that right. That's part of the, the motivation for the for the fence. Um, but you don't want the kids to wander out into the woods. Is that is that what the applicant is is worried that is, about? That is, right. The, again, that, the, that area of woods is somehow dangerous. Well, again, it's not the woods. It's it's people pulling up here. Um, again, it just happened yesterday. Uh, cause she, we were talking, she said it happened again, you know, um, 
again, the debris from uh, the loose debris that comes from across the street, for some reason, like I said, they have a lot. So, of no, but so, so let me stop. So, so you're justifying the, the putting of a fence in a wetland uh, as a means for blocking to, uh, basically litter from, from the neighbors. Um, that was so I wonder, I mean, I wonder if there are other ways of dealing with that problem uh, that doesn't require a, a chain link fence. Um, uh, so, so, I, so I understand that, that this is what the, the homeowner wants and I know that this is your attempt to try to satisfy uh, their desires, but I will say this is very difficult for the commission to approve as it is on this plan. Uh, I mean, we, we, it, it, it just runs against uh, our sort of the, the normal uh, protection of wetlands uh, to put this through. I mean, you're going to put posts down in the, in the wetland, put a chain link fence. Um, it's, it's much more typical for that to be pulled back even to the 25 foot line uh, in these cases, rather than to, to try to expand that area so much. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say beyond saying that I don't think this is a go. I mean, I'm not the only commissioner. Uh, other people might have different ideas. Sure. I mean, again, we knew it was going to be a topic for discussion. Uh, Deb and Clay, what, what's a more typical fence situation? Um, so you are correct, usually along the 25 foot, unless there, um, there is existing lawn area at that limit, then you may allow it within the 25 foot, I would say is more typical. And that's even in the cases where the, the 50 is the limit of... of... Okay. Well, that would be that would put us more on this dotted line. So, you know, I can talk with the homeowner and see um, how they, you know, how they would like to proceed with that. Well, and the only other exception I can think of is if it's riverfront area. I mean, you could have a gate oh, make it go into the wetland, right? The children. But, yeah. Again, is it is it okay for the homeowner to speak, or should I wait my turn? Uh, yes. So if the homeowner wants to comment on, on, on this yeah. issue, it's fine. No, we, we actually, we get a lot of people who drive up who aren't from the neighborhood and they park their cars to walk dogs and things like that. And so there are a lot of people back in there who are not from around here. And it's funny because I feel like I'm talking to my nine-year-old daughter now because with all of these kids at home, she likes to escape and go out into the woods. And I've tried to explain to her that you can't just wander into the woods by yourself. You don't know who's out there. You know, there are people from outside the neighborhood that come here and they may look harmless, but we just don't know who they are. So, you know, for me, it's just helpful and peace of mind knowing that our property is gated in. And I understand where you're coming from in terms of protecting the wetlands and whatnot. I just you know, I just want them to be able to have as much area to play in and be out in while still being safe. Yeah, I mean, so we're not saying that there can't be a fence. I think what we're saying is that uh, what we, what is the normal practice is to pull the fence so that it's not in the wetland, but it's 25 feet. That's the typical distance that we like to, to keep a buffer. Um, and... I mean, I'm not sure what you do about the end of the road, to be honest. Um, I mean, if there are people trespassing on your property. Right. It uh, just, it doesn't, there's no, it doesn't look like private property. So people try to dump stuff and brush. I mean, I just happened to catch the man out of the corner of my eye yesterday. Normally, you know, I wouldn't even, I got a lot of other stuff going on. So I'm not noticing trucks with brush, but um, it happens a lot. And like Diane said, we don't know what they're dumping there. And so just for people to know that this is private property would be helpful. And I know, yes, you can put up a sign. I just, a fence would be more advantageous for me as the property owner. 
Jen, can I just add, if you see people actually dumping in the wetlands, that is a violation. And, you know, feel free to call us in the office and, you know. Okay. Yeah. Like I took down his license plate and the second I turned my back, he peeled away. Like, so, okay. But, but that is a violation that you, exactly. you can let us know about. Okay. Okay. I want to Thank let you know. You. So I guess um, as part of her discussion, it, I don't know if you can see the screen again here, but would it, and this wouldn't necessarily be out of the 25, but it would be um, the edge of the property just coming across here. Uh, well, that's a, that's a road right there. So you want to fence off the property from the road. Is that, is that the idea? That's part of it. Yeah. They want, yeah, they, and again, I'm just wondering, it's, it's, you know, we can't, the pavement is back here. This dark line is the actual pavement. Yeah but the roadway is here. So though there's, you know, probably 10, 12 feet in the front that, you know, they, they may mow, uh, actually not over here, but over here, you know, but, um, but if we were to put something on the property line being within the 25 up front, would that be, and then somehow come back to the house, would that be something that would be acceptable even uh, it could, because it culverts here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. The water comes down. So it culverts here under. Um, so technically, and I think it does culvert for more than 100 feet. So technically, the wetland line ends here and is straight through. So technically, I guess it's outside of the, the buffer. Um, but again, would that be something the committee would be uh, amendable to? So, Deb, does that make sense to have just on, on the roadside because it no longer if it's on the road it, or 10 feet from the road i guess 10 feet from the pavement it no longer uh intrudes on the wetland itself right if it goes through a culvert at that point beneath the road then right. then it's then, then it's just a fence on a road not right. the wetland. and the wetland yep. line actually ends at the culvert yeah i mean right. i think that would be a case where the 25 foot is less precious, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Is this, is this fence going to have a raise? Is it going to be raised up, raised up six or seven inches from the ground? Well, this is why we chose the fence that we chose because, um, again, it will have um, the chain link so the creatures can no. be uh, space at the bottom with, no. the, with the squares. So it's going to be raised. I'm some. I'm confused. A chain link fence, by definition, isn't that doesn't mean it's raised up from the ground. So right. That's what I'm saying. Up. But but that's why we chose this fence. So it will. You don't. You don't have to raise it as much because of the uh, the spaces in the fence itself. Well, no. A chain link fence doesn't have. Uh, I'm a little confused. Okay. A chain link. It depends fence how big the holes are. Yeah, well, I mean, chain link fence has holes in them, but they're not big holes. So is it going to be raised up from the ground? I think the application said four inches is right. what they're proposing. Yeah, I think you have to talk a little bit about the installation of the fence because, you know, I've seen them put in with big hand augers and it, it can be a mess. Uh, there's a lot of disturbance when you put in those with each having poured and concrete the posts. And um, so maybe just a little more whatever we decide on the line of that fence, a little more detail of how it's actually going to be installed because um, you might need a lot of equipment back there. And Sure. And, uh, well, in the, in the waiver that, uh, again, you may not have received because that did go in late um, uh, because the fence was a last minute add-on, we, um, we did talk about how things would be, uh, the posts will be dug by hand, uh, loose dirt will be removed as it's taken out of the hole, it won't be on. It won't even be placed on the ground. It will be remo removed right away, um, so there will be no um, disturbed earth that loose disturbed earth that will be um, uh, able to um, uh, run into the wetlands. All that will be removed outside of the 100 foot buffer immediately. Um, okay. It will again only be a handheld, um, maybe a handheld arger. But you're saying that also creates a lot of disturbance. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, just even hitting groundwater, if you dig, dig in a post, it just could get messy, that's all. Um, so. 
Right. So next round, uh, some additional detail about the fence and its installation, I think. Um, and, and that may be what you gave us. There might be a detail on what you gave us tonight. But uh... Peter, can I ask one more question? Please. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, sort of consistent with the other application, um, whenever a lawn is extended, I'd like to ask about the irrigation. Have they thought about, are they going to extend uh, an irrigation system that's already there? Uh, is it going to be drip irrigation for the new plantings, um, permanent, temporary? I'm just curious. Um, Michelle, are you, do you know that answer? She must be muted. Um, I, I can find that out for the next meeting. I wasn't sure if she was aware. Okay. I can, uh, uh, my, my concern is uh, all, significantly altering a buffer zone, but then uh, overwatering and over, you know, I have some, some concerns with, with significantly changing how much uh, water is applied to that area. So um, just a little more detail, that'll be, that'll be helpful. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, so far, um, and I'm not sure I can be comprehensive about all the comments, but so far we have thoughts about the fence, um, additional details in terms of the construction, um, questions about the actual plants on the list that are proposed to be uh, planted within the buffer, uh, additional information about the trees that are uh, considered hazards and marked for um, um, snagging, um, irrigate that ir the irrigation question. Any other any other top of the mind concerns? Oh, the fence, obviously. Fence is yep. Big. yep. But what you said, Peter, the idea of making it it's very garden esque. It's not very natural. And also, I had an, a, a somewhat concern that one tree there was a lot of planting under it. And it may, you know, in the root systems, it may affect the tree itself. Okay. If you dig the whole tree up down a foot or something to put all of these shrubs and things in, you're going to essentially disturb most of the root system of the tree. So I, I think maybe even though it looks pretty on paper, that one that's in the middle right there, that, that one looks like it's really being... This one here? 50% of the root system of the tree looks like it's going to be disturbed by planting, new planting. So even though it might be very pretty, it, it, you know, you could, you could, you could kill it, that tree. So it'd be interesting right. to know what that tree is. You know. Okay, I, I will bring that up. The other, the other ones that are being planted under them, some trees can take it better than others. Um, you know, some, some are more sensitive than others. So. I don't know, just be mindful of that. It's there, there will, most of the life of the tree is underground. So you don't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. Okay. So, and one question Is the play structure being relocated to the lawn area? Yes, it is. Um, I believe that's on the play structure is over here. Okay. That's existing lawn. So it's being moved from there? No, it, it was, uh, well, it was over here where the pool was being placed. Then they moved it back over here while they're doing some construction in the pool. But the final location is okay. hoping to be here. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, first, run, first run through, um, looks like we're continuing. We need to continue anyway, right? For, yeah. for Oh. Um, and, and so I, I expect that, um, you're going to need to go that Diane, if <laughs> that, that you'll probably be in the position to, of actually presenting this one again, uh, with revisions, uh, Absolutely. in, in the next hearing, um, and the additional information that we requested, uh, as, as I always say, there may be a different subset of us at that meeting. And so there will be new things that may emerge in the course of, of the continued hearing. Absolutely. Um, and just try right. to get it in a week ahead of time so we can uh, send it out. Thank you. Yes. Um, 
uh, anyone in the audience have a question? Uh, there are no raised hands in the audience now. Okay, very good. So I think I'm ready to move to continuation. Um, this would be continued for two weeks. Um, to the 27th. 20, to the 27th. Uh, yep. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right, I'll go through. Uh, Sue? Aye. Artie? Yes. Allison? Allison? Sorry, it, wasn't, it was sticking. Aye. <laughs> Bill? Aye. Peter, aye. Okay, so, so this will be continued uh, till uh, May 27th. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. So we are now um, going to open the hearing mm -hmm. for 80 Country Way. DEP file number 234. Uh, does it have a DEP file number? 80 Country Way? No, it doesn't have one yet. Okay, so another continuation. Yeah. Um, and this is a notice of intent. Um, and Artie is here. Um, Artie, can you take us through the project? Yeah. Um. Sorry for the noise, the printer is printing right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Murphy's not. Um, so what's happening is that we came in front of you guys um, uh, two years ago because we uh, proposed this new house at the time and the house was built, uh, the certificate of compliance was issued. But what ended up being is that uh, back in October, the owner, the uh, uh, there, is, there is a new owner, uh, Greg, which uh, we are doing the work now. Uh, he just he purchased the property and he moved into this area. He came from the uh, north end, so he wasn't familiar exactly with what the requirements are for uh, Needham. Uh, he found out the hard way uh, that having the wetlands uh, can be a big problem. Uh, there is, uh, hold on a second, uh, he happened to, hold on, So as you can see from this picture, uh, uh, in December, uh, because the one of the culverts was uh, uh, blocked, uh, the town had not cleared up on country way, it ended up the whole area on that backyard all the way up to near the wall became almost a swimming pool and he had two feet of water inside his house. So it became a big project, but that, uh, that brought up the concern about the trees and the safety that was at the site. Uh, so without knowing the, the, uh, the requirements uh, for uh, what needed to be done as far as what the commission had decided before, uh, he inadvertently ended up cutting this 30 inch tree that was on the left front corner of the house. And there is another tree that was uh, the 32 inch on the side in here that happened to be damaged. So um, back in February, he went on and he cut this trees. And when we got involved as far as the the swimming pool project, we noticed that the work, these two trees were missing from when we did the certificate of compliance. So uh, he didn't know about this. Uh, however, in order to do the right thing, we are proposing uh, two additional 
uh, trees on the on the driveway, and then because of cutting this tree on the back, he has, we have proposed another two additional trees. Uh, currently, on the back of the house, there is a patio, and we got the drainage for the roof uh, of the house. Uh, there is all lawn in here, and the wall and everything is all uh, built up. This is the area that got filled with the water uh, in December, this area in here. So what we are proposing is that we, we are proposing to put a, a swimming pool that is 31 by 18 and a half with a hot tub and the pool equipment all inside the lawn area, uh, away from the wall. It shouldn't have an impact with the drainage field that is already there. The patio around the swimming pool will be all pervious material. And uh, as far as the, the fence, there is a piece of existing fence all the way up to the existing wall in here. We are proposing to put the fence for the pool going around the wall and all the way up to closing at the corner of the house. Uh, we have proposed erosion control barrier along the top of the wall in order to prevent any uh, debris or anything that would go over uh, the wall to, go, to protect the wetlands. In order to, to protect the um, the drainage field that exists there, uh, we are uh, we have proposed plywood to be placed over it. So when they come with equipment, they don't crash the, the, the chambers. Um, the because this is just a swimming pool, it doesn't have an impact on the lot coverage. And uh, uh, being all pervious, we have the detail in here for the pervious uh, patio, and that needs to be. Um, cleaned every so often to make sure that uh, it functions properly. As far as the erosion control barrier, typically uh, we propose the, the filter net, the one foot diameter saw, but because in this case it's all long, there is already a wall in here, we expect to do the, the work in the next month uh, or so. Uh, the idea was uh, to uh, propose just a silt fence on this area to protect the, the thing because it's going to be so small that uh, any uh, soil that's going to be dug out, we're going to be removing it and getting out of the site. It's too tight to get out on this side in here, so they will end up having to get on the driveway side to get the soil out. But again, this, the pool we are talking about 31 by 18 and a half. So we don't expect to have that much of soil to be removed. There is no change on the grading uh, that's going to be significant. We're talking about within a half a foot. And then doing the, the area as a pervious patio, uh, we believe that that's going to help out as far as the not to increase much more than the, the impervious surface. From the swimming pool all the way to the wetlands, we are at 51 feet. Um, again, it's all lawn. Uh, you guys have approved it before, and we were hoping that uh, since uh, this is a new uh, resident in town, um, can you show some leniency as far as the fact that we ended up adding, you know, vertically cutting those trees without knowing? All right, thank you. Um, let me go through the commissioners, see if there's any questions. Sue? I'm good. Thank you. Hardy? Uh, a couple things. I just wanted to verify the diameter of the trees again that were taken down. Uh, there was one tree in here that was 30 inches. It was a pine tree. Yep. And another uh, tree on the back on the side in here that was 32 inches. And what type of tree is that one? I would lie if I said I know the type we had included on the report that we had done before. I would say oak more than likely, but I can I can have an answer for you on, on the next meeting, that's for sure. I can tell you the exact name that the arbor is there. Yeah, that would be helpful, thank you. The branches had fallen down and there was concern about the kids, that's why. I mean, certainly some trees next to it are some it's listing as red maple trees. Um, that's been listed. Um, now, was the stump, was the stumps, were the stumps removed? Are the stumps still there? Uh, this one, is, no, it hasn't been removed. This was grinded. It's covered now, but I mean, the stump is still there. Um, uh, I don't believe that 
I think this was grinded down, but the stump is not sticking above the ground. So it's level with the ground. The was was I don't believe that they took it out. Um, one thing, uh, so Peter and the rest of the commissioners, one thing I'm curious about are the, the companies that are cutting these trees down, where most of them, at this point, every tree company probably knows the rules and regulations about taking trees down, is my guess. And, and to take a tree down and just feign ignorance on their part at some point would get a little old. I'd be curious about the company that took the tree down. I would like to know that if at all possible. Um, and certainly like to know the type of tree that was, the, the back one that was taken down is that the value of that one, I mean, they all have value, but that one, if it's a maple, probably has perhaps has more value than maybe the pine tree, for example, but at the same time, it's a 32 inch diameter, 32 inch diameter tree. That's a pretty, that's a pretty decent sized tree. So, um, and, and the trees being, the trees being planted, the replacement trees being planted? Uh, we are we are proposing the two uh, near the same area. We're planting the red maple trees. We have two three inches over here and two three inches over there. I couldn't hear you, Artie. Artie, I couldn't quite hear you then. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so that sometimes the, the the audio goes out. So, so the trees and the but the tree in the back taken yeah. out and the ones being what are the what trees? Are what, what are the replacement trees? Artie? Yeah, I can hear you. What 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 are the replacement trees being put in? Uh, they are red maple trees or what size what size? What size? Are they gonna be three inches? Three inches in diameter. Okay. And you're putting two of those, planting two of those. Is that it? Yeah, we're planting two for the one that we took on the front in here and two for the other one that we took on the street. Yeah, the main point thing is you're planting just Replacing two in the back for this one, you, you're asking. I mean, you're asking us. You're asking forgiveness for the, uh, the the home new homer in town, and and but yet of course if if we had I'm no doubt we 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 did say we probably already said no if that was even ever asked to be taken down we would have likely said no, and if we even remotely became close to saying yes. With it being a healthy tree, we not likely would have accepted two three inch diameter trees in this replacement. So I'm all for, I'm all for uh, giving giving a giving kind of some slack. I'm just uh, you know that that's a pretty that's a pretty mild pretty mild replacement. Is this this isn't a situation where it's necessarily, in my opinion, that it necessarily falls under the a normal tree replacement Replace. policy already. So um, I would think I would think that the um, um, come back with a little bit more than just a normal tree replacement schedule for the one. I think so. Okay, what, what, what are you looking for a three to one ratio or what? Well, I mean, I, I just, it, it seems like it, it just, to me, it just seems like it's a pretty weak replacement for that massive tree that was taken down. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's looking for us to just, you know, um, it, it, not penalize him. Basically, he's looking for us to not penalize him. Okay, and I can I can perhaps go along with that, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean we should just simply accept a, a normal tree replacement policy of a tree that that we would allow to come down, and we would I don't think we would have allowed this tree to come down, and so I don't think it's I don't think it's right on a, on a replacement for the value of the replacement. I don't want to be I don't want to be unrealistic and unrealistic and unfair, but I think it's fair to say that. Okay, and he took it down by accident. What can you do to make up for that fact? I don't know. I, I don't see as this is making up for that. That was a massive tree that came down. So, I don't know. I'll get some other thoughts from the other commissioners, but I would like to find out um, a little bit more information as far as what tree came down and who cut the tree down. At some point, I'd like to find out what companies are taking these trees down when they probably know when they probably know better. Okay. Um, Allison, any questions, comments? No, I just, I agree with Artie. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, we do have a tree replacement policy, um, but 
you know, some of that does need to be connected with the scale of the tree that we removed. Um, and so that is something that we'll talk about. Um, all right, so um, Bill? Uh, my only question I have um, and concern I have is, is with the pool. Um, and I, I always like to see an area uh, designated for discharging the backwash of the pool that has to be routinely done. You know, you, sometimes you have to discharge 50, 100 gallons to backwash the filters. And um, over time, that can cause disturbance. And I've seen it, I've seen it before where sort of hoses are run down to the lowest point on a property, which in this case is, a, is the wetland area. So, uh, Artie, if you can just designate an area, I like to see some crushed stone. Um, some, I know some towns ask for a little drain or subsurface drain. I, I don't know. I'll let you, I'll let you make that professional uh, decision. But um, at the very least, I just like to see an area where uh, water can be discharged without uh, ero significant erosion over time. There is a, there is a chlorine residual in that water too. Although it's, you know, over, I think it's very insignificant. That's not my main concerns. Because most of them are using cartridge filters, they kind of went away from using the backwash yeah. pits. Um, we have been um, having them install it. those signs as well, Bill. Um, you know, about having the chlorine dissipate before any um, discharge and such. So we can require one of those signs um, at the pump. That would, that would be helpful. That would be helpful. <clears throat> Thank you. That's all I have. Thank um, you. Um, and are there, is anyone in the audience with a uh, question? Uh, it does not look like there's any raised hands, no. All right. Um, I understand that there's a COC issue as well with this um, because um, the COC wasn't complete. It was partial. And now that those trees have been cut down, which were supposed to be retained, uh, does that mean that starts over? Or do we, or after these are, so it, it postpones the, I guess this rolls over that part of the COC? So yeah. currently there is a partial COC that was issued for the demolition and construction of the new house. Um, last year, they were, uh, yeah, in 2020, um, they came before us to close out to get that partial. Um, and the only remaining work was the two-year monitoring of the mitigation plantings, which were primarily installed um, on the right-hand side of the property along the retaining wall. Um, at that time, the new homeowners, I believe, did, did sign a statement saying they were aware that they were inheriting this um, two-year planting requirement. Um, I would say that any plantings for these, these two removed trees are probably standalone. I, I okay. The commission's purview, but... Um, I don't believe the two trees in question here were part of that original monitoring and mitigation. They, they can still be mutually exclusive in my opinion. Okay, very good. So they're two, it's two different notices and two different COCs. Then. Okay, great. Um, all right, so really substantively, it looks like uh, Bill had some had a request um, about the drainage in the pool. And then uh, Artie had a request about information about the tree and who, um, what firm uh, cut it down. Um, beyond that, any other things, that, anything I'm missing? We're just waiting for a DEP number as and well. And the DEP number, uh, which will require us to continue this hearing. All right, so. We send them an email, but I haven't heard back. Is it possible that we can move forward with installation of the silt fence in the meantime? Because it's going to be on the side where the wall is in here? Or do you want to wait until the meeting? Deb, what do you typically do? Is there a reason that you want to do it now? Well, I was, I mean, just to uh, 
put it there so it's one less thing that we have to worry about. So hopefully in two weeks, we already have uh, submitted to the building department. So uh, the, the homeowner has young kids and they are eager to see this pool on the ground. So uh, hoping that we can get the approval from you on the next meeting, we would like to get going because that's the only thing that is holding up the building from it. Okay, is the commission happy with that erosion control that's proposed there? Is this work for you, Deb? Do you have to be there? Is this like a pre-construction thing? No, I mean, we require them to have it in before our pre-construction meeting anyways, um, before our site visit, so we can review it at that point. Yeah. So if you're okay with what they're proposing for erosion controls there, then I don't have a problem with them installing it. Anyone have an objection? No. Hearing none, uh, I will say that, yeah, that that amount of work doesn't seem uh, problematic. If I, can, if I may ask Art for his opinion, uh, would be on the front part of the property, Art, where this tree used to be, uh, we are proposing, we have the drainage field nearby. So what we are uh, thinking is we propose one tree on the left-hand side of the driveway, another tree on the right-hand side of the driveway. There are more trees that were part of the older mitigation that was on the right-hand side. It's kind of hard to put more trees on this front section. Uh, would you be happy if we propose two additional trees or, along this back area in here, even if we put it outside the 100-foot buffer because there is not enough room in here to put the additional trees? Artie, I think that was directed at you. It was directed at me? Yeah, whether you'd feel comfortable if the trees more, move to the side. So we have two more trees that, that are near this one, but will end up being outside the 100 foot buffer. Is that okay with you, or would you like to see them somewhere else? Um, well, there are a couple of ways to interpret that. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly what space there is there. I mean, a couple of ways to interpret that one is we have no jurisdiction outside the 100 foot buffer zone so we can see anything you can say anything you want and whether they're there or not in a year or two we have no we have no jurisdiction there um i don't know you know where 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 your cursor is right now i don't know what space is available there for trees this is open. Um, I, don't, I don't know what space is available um you know, in the very back of the property I don't know, maybe the space there. Um, again, we have no jurisdiction outside the 100 foot zone. So, you know, so this. Are you okay if we plant more trees, but to be away from this location somewhere down here? Are you, as long as it's within 100 feet buffer? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I'd be okay if some, if, some, if some of the additional trees were in other locations in our jurisdiction, but it yeah. also depends on what value they are and where they're being planted. I mean, if they're being planted, if a three foot tree is being planted in between two, you know, 30 inch diameter trees and that tree has no chance of survival. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean, Artie. Yeah, obviously well, uh, uh, what, I, what we usually try to do is when we mitigate, we try to put it nearby where the tree was cut, but because this tree is almost at the 100 foot buffer, it yeah. doesn't cause too much wiggle room because of other trees being in here. We can yeah, I, I, I can, yeah, I can appreciate that, Artie. I think it's a matter of, you know, show, show us what you got and, um, and I, I, I'm thinking, you know, I'm only one commissioner as the saying goes, but I do know that in the, in the past, we've made statements relative to the fact that anything that's planted outside our jurisdiction, you know, there's little, we have little control over anything that's happening in the future related to that. That's um, right. You know, if, if, you know, if we have no options, we have no options. No, no, we're, uh, we're, here. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely put it, but it's just it's not going to be right next to it. We'll find an area that is open that might need a tree or two. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think we need that. We think I think we need to find some spaces, some spot for the trees that are, if we can, potentially in our jurisdiction. Um, and and my my, I mean, I don't know. What, I, I don't know eventually what we're going to settle on for what we're going to what we're going to require for this tree being taken down. I don't know. You know, total total of four, total of six. I, I have no clue what we're going to we're going to ask. Is it possible that I can get the commission to allow Deb to meet with me on site to find areas where we can plant the trees, so that at least you have some confidence that 
the two of us saw it and it would be an area that would be suitable for planting two more trees or three more trees. Is that okay with you? Yeah, I mean, the question is what, whether this is worth a site visit or not to figure out where trees might go. Um, uh, what do you think about that, Artie? I, I, I mean, per, personally, I don't know if it's worth the site visit, man. I mean, I, I, I mean, I trust Artie to, to, to do it, to, you know, to do what's necessary to accomplish a goal. Is I don't know how the other commissioners feel about mitigation outside of our jurisdiction. You know, well, I, I, no, I mean, I think, I think, um, yes, I think that's that's a um, that's a ground rule that it would need to be within the 100 buffer. Oh. The question is whether it needs to be near the tree that was uh, was removed, or whether it can be put in a space that uh, is still within the buffer, but out, but removed from the original yeah. tree. Um, well, well, and and, and yeah. I think and I think Artie that that uh, yeah I mean if you want to propose that uh, you know propose some options on the plan maybe have some photographic evidence that this is not just, you know, another tree among trees, but actually has some value. And then I'm, So they I'm, are proposing four trees, you know, two trees near where each of the two have been taken out. These are just the additional trees, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's correct. Two additional trees or three additional trees. Is that what you would that yeah, Exactly. To try to make up for the size of that tree that was taken out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, it seems fine. reasonable that it there as long as they're on the hundred foot buffer, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, comment about one comment. Sorry, if Allison. Those, if, in this location, those two red maples are going to grow really big right next to the pool. <laughs> so you'll have the same problem. The next owner <laughs> will want to cut them down. I mean, I don't know. It's just just a comment. Uh, what, what would you prefer a different type over there, or what would you recommend? No, I mean, I'm just I'm just saying that they get they get big, right near the pool. I mean, you know, there will be leaves falling in the pool. So I don't know. I mean, it's just it's just this is a problem when you put pools next to in wetland, you know, in buffer zones. So that's my only comment. Yeah. Well. As long as the homeowner understands that and understands that these trees are not to be removed, I think that's, you know. Um, all right, uh, are we ready to continue? Thank you, I request a continuance to the next meeting. Yes, that would be the 27th. Okay. All right, so uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second? A second. All right, I'll go through. Uh, Artie? Yes. Sue? Aye. Allison? Allison? I'm sorry, I, I saw your mouth say aye, but I didn't hear your voice. I don't know why my computer is having trouble tonight it, 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 in other ways as well. Sorry. Hi. Bill? Aye. And Peter? Aye. So this is continued to the next meeting, May 27th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. So a couple of other pieces of business before we get to the discussion about the RTS. Um, first, there's a request for certificate compliance for 71 Stockdale Road. So I'll open that up. DEP file number 234-651. Um, um, there's not a represent, re representative for this. Uh, it looks All like right. the homeowner, uh, homeowner. The drill may be here. Um, I will give a, a brief history on this one. Um, this, this project uh, came before us, so it had a partial certificate of compliance and they came before us um, last year um, to have their plant approved after the two years mitigation. There was a report submitted by John Rockwood suggesting that they didn't quite hit the 75% survival rate. 
Um, however, the property was under agreement for purchase, so we're trying to wrap that up. Um, that was in the meeting in June of 2020, so just just about a year ago. Um, the new homeowners did come in. They met with the, the commission. Um, one of the things that was discussed was whether they would need a new monitoring report or not. And at that June meeting, it was decided that they could do a one one year growing season. You would not issue the full COC until they um, had the plantings in for at least one growing season with adequate um, with adequate survivability for the additional replacement plantings. Um, so the homeowners did reach out to us. They sent us the photos as requested. Uh, and we went out and conducted a site visit to confirm that the plantings that were, were replaced were still in good health. Um, so we're here tonight to say, to say that they are. Um, and that staff would recommend a complete COC. Okay, very good. So let me just uh, go through the commissioners if they have any questions. Artie? Artie, any questions? Uh, you can't, can you hear me? I, I wasn't able to hear you, I can hear you now. Yeah, no, no questions. Okay, Sue? No questions, and I'm not gonna recuse myself. I live across the street, for the, but see, it sounds pretty simple. So, um, no questions. Allison? Questions. Bill? Uh, no, no questions. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward, me too. Uh, so let's, uh let's uh i guess at this point we vote to issue the certificate of compliance correct um uh motion so move. second i second. second all right all in favor Artie. Artie. i think i got kind of a partial <laughs> sue Aye. Uh, Bill. Aye. And Allison. Allison. It said it was on mute. Aye. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. And and I for me too. So okay. So we will be issuing the certificate of compliance. So that's all set. All right. Uh a small request for Ridge Hill Reservation Needham Cub Scouts. Yes. So do we, we need to vote on this or do you just want to inform us? Uh, I believe we usually collect a vote. It's the standard um, Cub Scout uh, recruiting event that they, they usually hold annually. Last year, they did not come before the commission because of the COVID restrictions. They did not hold this uh, event. Um, the only change in use from what they've done in the past is that this year they will have to rent a porta potty just for the day, since the Ridge Hill restrooms are no longer accessible um, for events. Otherwise, uh, it's the same number of people they expect to have, um, no more than 20 cars on the property. Um, they're apprised of all of the uh, rules and regulations for Ridge Hill, and it's expected to last um, to two hours, two to four hours. And, and this is not near the window of when they're planning to, to do the demolition work on the uh, It's not property. anticipated to be. We'll also be in contact with um, DPW because they do have some uh, mulch piles associated with their garages there. Yes. Yes, so I've where are they putting the porta potty clay? Is it are they putting it by the buildings? Yeah, I suppose that will be determined, but I'm guessing it'll be within uh, the driveway area, um, both for access by the people and also for access by the delivery service, whoever would bring that in. All right, we should probably see who we have to let know at DPW in case there's any issues with it. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. I see. So that's where they're storing their their mulch that they're then moving to other locations. So there might be big equipment potentially back there pulling that out. Okay. Um, any other thoughts from the commission? Hearing none, let's move to a vote. Does this need a motion? Mo uh, motion to approve. Motion to approve the Cub Scout event. Second. Second. 
Second, Artie second. Uh, all in favor, Artie? Aye. Allison? Get back to you, Allison. Bill? Aye. Sue? Aye. Allison? On mute. But it, there's, it's, there's not a little thing. Aye. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, it, it's, there's something funny. It's not, you know, the little microphone with the cross through it? Yeah. It's not here. And oh, I no. say it, you don't hear it. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. I know how to do this. <laughs> You do. Yeah, we should have sort of alternate uh, hand signals. I mean, we we could use the yes. tools. Exactly. We exactly we could use the tools provided for us. I mean, these are it's, being, it's, it's recorded. That's that's. These aren't just audio, but they're they're video recorded, right? Are these just audio recorded? So you know, at they're any rate, video recorded. But oftentimes, for ease of, of being able to see what's on the screen, it ends up in speaker view. So if you don't make a noise, uh, on your end, you might not. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on. All right. At any rate, so I think now we're ready to talk about uh, the RTS uh, uh, solar yes. request. So I'd like to call on Oliver and Ryan. If you're still there to come back. We're here. And to take us through what you're requesting. Um, yeah, thank you everybody. Uh, is there a way for me to, sh I would like to share my screen. Can yeah. everybody see that? Uh, I don't see anything. Let's try again. How's that? That's looking better soon. All right. So um, thank you guys for giving us the time tonight. Um, we, my name is Oliver Nall, and I'm with my colleague Ryan McGovern. We both work with Tesla in the um, kind of on the back end, maintaining our renewable energy assets. Today we're here to talk about the um, Needham landfill, specifically the wire trays. Uh, this, this image here is kind of a depiction of the problem that we're facing. It's a, it's a very large solar site, so it's producing a lot of renewable energy, which is great, but we're losing a lot of renewable energy due to these weeds growing up through the trays. And I'll explain why in a second. So just to start off, we did some initial surveys here of how far we are from the wetlands. Um, we're approximately 290 from the nearest federal wetlands and 3,100 from the nearest state wetlands as far as our reckoning. So we feel like we've got a pretty decent buffer from the fence line uh, to the wetlands where we're proposing to do our work. So we're proposing to use a broad spectrum herbicide to control weeds. The, the reason why this is important is because the weeds are creating a habitat for critters to crawl up into the trays and, and chew on wires, essentially causing sections or large portions of the array to go down, uh, which results in no energy production, um, which the energy pr production directly benefits the town as well as Tesla. So allowing us to be able to spray this broad spectrum herbicide onto the trays would allow us to effectively maintain the wire mesh around these cable trays so that we can repair the site quicker or stop um, pests from chewing on wires and, and hurting themselves too in the, in the process. So I brought Ryan on board because he's a, he's a specialist in this and licensed, but I wanna open it up for questions and see if we can answer what you guys might wonder. Right, so, so it's not that the vegetation is shading the solar panels. This is to prevent wildlife from living in that area. Yeah, for, for reference, Peter. So I was um, I was a field service manager last year. Before I was an electrician, I was a licensed pesticide applicator in the state of Massachusetts. Um, what happened is, is a lot of bunnies moved in and they started chewing on the conductors, um, committing suicide, essentially. So we were removing bunny corpses. Um, we tried encasing the larger conductors in metal, which has helped. 
Um, but now they're actually going in under the array and they're chewing on the DC conductors and they're they're killing themselves because um, it's about you know 800 volts DC um, at about 10 amps. So they're, uh, we've tried just about everything. We tried using a solar powered electronic deterrence to keep them away. Um, we've obviously tried encasing as much of these things as we can, but as long as that vegetation is still there, they're just gonna keep breeding there and they're gonna keep habitating there. Um, so when this site was originally built, it was done so you could see the crushed stone and the weed mat. Um, at this point in this site's life, uh, the weed mat has pretty much dissolved and the weeds are starting to come through. So there are sections where the array is being shaded out, but uh, more importantly, there are these sections along the side where the rabbits are just loving life. Um, have you considered, uh, I mean, you've, you ran through a few of this, the potential solutions. Um, is, I don't know, is, is there a possibility of fencing it off? So the array is fenced off. Um, they've crawled underneath the fencing and they, they, they actually live inside of it. This is a relatively large system. Um, so we tried fencing, we, we tried encasing the cable tray itself uh, in metal fencing. Um, we have a fence around the perimeter. We tried a granular deterrent, you know, an over-the-counter deterrent to keep the rabbits away. Um, and we also tried an electronic pass repellent and none of them are working. So, so basically you are trying to um, uh, eliminate a habitat. Yeah, we're trying to eliminate just, just the habitat for these rabbits now surrounding the area. There's wonderful wooded habitat for them to go and, and, and move in. And if we can just remove this particular section of it, they should vacate and go into the wooded habitat because they won't be a food source. No, it's interesting. So, so when this array was proposed, you know, years ago, um, the uh, the hill that that the solar array was on was a thriving meadow. I mean, it was a very nice habitat. Um, and in fact, as you probably know, the meadow environment is a relatively uh, is a shrinking one in Massachusetts, and and so there's actually so. There's a lot of discussion at the time of, of can this be both uh, maintained as a habitat or are they mutually exclusive? In other words, can wildlife and the solar array exist together? And I think that was a compromise that was made at the time. And so what you're asking is basically to say wildlife and the solar array cannot uh, exist together, number one, and number two, that the only way that that you think left to take care of this problem is uh, to use broad spectrum herbicide. Um, okay, so let me hear from the commissioners. Oh, um, uh, yeah. So we don't need branding in here. Artie. Okay. Um, so questions I have is. I'd like to go back to the conversation about the wires. Uh, are these wire, uh, and actually, I want, what I'd like to start with is what would you have a graph that shows the percentage of any energy loss when this is happening, of what's happening over time within the energy loss? I'd like to see, I mean, that by itself, you know, shows dips and can be just dips in times of weather, but is the red circle supposed to be something related to the right. rate going down? So the great question. So the red line here represents the average production that we would expect based on our modeling. The blue line represents actual production going up and down based on weather variability. Mm -hmm. The red lines here represent sections or the red circles are highlighting times when the array is severely underproducing due to the animal problem. Okay, and okay, um, okay, and let's go back to the 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 conduit runs again for a second. As far as you were talking about, Sandy, man, I heard mentioned about they were being encased in fencing or something encased in it to stop the animals from chewing on it. So, okay, so they're encased in something to stop the animals from chewing on it. And but it, then it, then I heard it made then I heard some comment making it sound like. Although I would take it, I would, I would almost seems like DC would be in this as well, but 
Then, then all of a sudden, sound like the bodies were then going under the panels more directly to the DC lines under the panels themselves. Actually, can you, can you blow that's up correct. that picture any more than what it is now? You, are you, you're showing some fencing that's being taken off, put on, or so this is, this is this is the con. These are the conduit ones, and this is the fencing or the wire mesh that's starting to go over. Is this it's starting to go over that conduit runs? So this is this is prefix. Ryan can probably speak in greater detail. This, but this is prefix, and then the picture is. Yeah, this was installed last year. This is after the fix, where the bunnies are are essentially they're getting through this. So part of the reason why we'd like to use the broad spectrum is so that we can repair the system when it gets damaged. So I'm a little so if you're putting fencing around this, which I mean. Somewhat obviously, this this was missing from the original installation. That should should have been been in there, but that's that's past. So now now you're 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 putting fencing wire mesh around these to protect it. So I'm I'm trying to figure out. You put the herbicide down. Yeah, these are only the combined output of the of the panels. Uh, yeah. From panel to panel, there's a small twelve gauge wire. Well, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, panel to panel. Yeah, you know, it's being connected. You probably don't have optimizers. This was probably just straight, straight string inverters in this situation. So the, yeah. the wire is coming off the back of each panel, going down into the the main feed, and you're but that's not being protected because I mean, so that's not or you you're saying that has to be protected also because that's a little harder to protect, of course. That one, that wire. Are you saying that has to be protected now? Yes, as well, because I mean, the combined input of these strings, you're, you know, 7,800 volts at, at 10 no, amps. No, 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 I understand the voltage. No, I understand the voltage is quite high. Um, what I'm saying, but are you saying you're going to do something to protect each wire coming off the panel, going down into the main conduit? We're saying we can't. I mean, it, there, there is no conduit. They're open wire yeah, they're um, open. to combine together. Yeah, they're open wires going down, but they're going... Yeah, so there's nothing you can do to protect that individual wire. You're trying to protect the main trunk, so the main the main feed of the wires. Right. Um, but are you saying that you're going? To, you want to do something to eradicate all all the areas around the panels, not just the main, just not not just the main runs for any type of vegetation to try to deter the bunnies from being around the array at all. I mean, I'm trying to understand what you're trying to where you're trying to stop the bunnies from being at this point. Right. Ryan, maybe you could speak to- Yeah, it's within the array, around the array. So I, every, every, everything around the array. So it isn't, it isn't just spraying the broad spectrum around the, these main conduit ones you're showing us. It's around, it's in, it's in amongst the whole array. I think the main the main concern for us with the spraying is on the cable trays. I don't see any reason why we couldn't do typical mowing methods in in, in other areas, but we can't mow underneath and, and around these arrays efficiently enough to to keep the bodies away. So mowing the, the herbicide use isn't the, the main goal is to use it on the wire trays, and we can limit it to that. Um, I think that's what our, our ask really comes boils down to. Um, is is making sure that we can clear these main arrays, these main trays, because they just can't be mowed to keep the bunnies out of them. Okay, and, and you're saying that there's nothing, you're saying what you've done at this point, even though they're wrapped in wire, is not actually stopping the bunnies from getting into this con these conduit ones. Correct, yeah. You can why, see why, why is that? It's a good they're smarter question. than they act. <laughs> they're, they're smart little animals. They find every gap. They find every hole. They find every way to get in there. Um, eventually, you know, that, that cable tray comes to a point where it has to be open to enter into the two and a half megawatt inverter or to enter into the combiner boxes. And they find the littlest area. They get in there and we go up there to service it with a ground fault and we find dead rabbits everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the... Uh, how many in, uh, aren't the in, aren't there inverters strewn amongst this whole, the whole array? 
no, sir. This is one giant central two and a half megawatt, two two and two and a half megawatt central inverters. They're, These are the largest just, ones so, in all of Tesla's fleet. There are there is, so there are just two inverters for this this whole array system. Those are big. Those are big Correct. inverters. So that's so the three yeah. point the three point six megawatt system going. Okay. Can I can I ask just that area? So so if we scale this back so that the rest of the array would be modes and just these areas had the uh, herbicide app applied to them. Um, what is the approximate area that we're talking about now? That is a good question. So the central inverters are here and, and the wire trays run, you know, basically along the edges of the inverters. So minimal, really. And, and you can see the fenced in area here, right? So we're not, you know, the the area that we're really responsible for, it's not it's not enormous. And it and as mentioned, it's not it's not sitting right on top of the wetlands or anything. It's it's you know, really just the minimal, the, the main trays along the edge of the array here. Okay, I, I mean, I think we were alarmed, particularly at the idea that herbicide was going to be used sort of indiscriminately over this whole array. Um, um, but if that's Can not I the just case, mention I think, something that the, the, the yeah. wetlands lines that they're showing isn't accurate mm. at all. Um, compared to what we've had delineated for various projects. Um, the wetland really comes right up to, to the um, base in certain areas. So the, so the wetland is right there rather than being 300 feet away. Right, correct. Or 3,000, I think, as was stated. I mean, is, is this basically where you're saying, Deb, right here? Well, even, yeah, even on the right-hand side where the, where the stream is, that comes up much closer okay. to the to the base. Okay. What's the what's the res the restriction based on hundred feet or what's the? What's well, the it is, but it's also anything that is outside of their jurisdiction that can affect the wetland. So, if you're spraying herbicides up there that get washed down into the wetland, then that becomes their purview. So, but Peter, but Peter, you were, you were, can we go back to the, the photo, the little more close up photo of the array, the actual little cleaner picture of it? A couple of pictures from that. Uh, no, the other direction, or where, wherever you were. You were there, so you were there a minute ago, right there, yeah, right there. No, go back one. Go back one. No, that, that one right there. Okay. So, are you saying essentially the, the, the conduit runs or the, the channels are basically this upside down Y, for example? Are they, are they following just the inside perimeter, let's say, of the of the arrays? It's not going the outside. There's not, nothing on the outside of the array near the fence. It's on the inside of this upside down Y. Yeah, right. that's correct. The in, and Ryan, you've been on site. Is there any that run down the middle here? There are some that run down the middle. There's a main trunk right down the middle. What you're seeing there at the top of the A there, that's essentially the pad where the two inverters are. So there is some trunk cable going down that way, and then there are a few that come in from the the two sides. But then, but then there's a, is there a trunk going down on the right on the middle right? The in the, yeah that area right there is there a trunk right there coming down? I mean, the, the, I mean the right hand. Not that array, I recall. I mean the right the right hand array has to get to the inverter. So what is the pathway of that larger section of the array? What's the pathway of that over to the inverter? I would, I would think, I haven't been on They site. are coming, if we're looking at this as a map, they're coming east to west. Yep. So, so they're, they're all coming, they're all making their way over to that inside of the A, and then hitting, a, then hitting the, the, the trays, the wire trays, and going over to the inverter. Yep, and then from there out, it's in solid conduit from there out to the point of interconnection. Okay. But the but there's I mean that right hand section is a huge section. There's a lot of wire come from there. But the, and there's no there's no spot within there you have to spray in that section. Ryan, there, correct me if I'm wrong, but you you were mentioning that there are points 
there are certain spots within this array where plants are starting to poke up and we would want to target, you know, just the, the individual places where plants are growing. So if you look at this picture here, you can't see any plants growing here, but there are specific spots where maybe a larger plant or is poking up, which we want to make sure to mitigate. But as you can tell, there's really no spacing between these rows to bring a mower in or anything like that. So maybe a targeted yeah. application, you know, wherever we see something poking up that might represent a, even a threat to the landfill potentially, uh, just to to really knock that out as well. So, but but the, and the, and those. And those plants are coming up through a tray, through the conduit plants, or just coming up between the panels? Just coming up coming between up, the panels. Yeah. yeah, between the panels. They've broken through the weed mat that was installed at construction. Yeah. Okay. But it's that's really more isolated, I would say, and, and not as big of an issue as the yeah. as the trays themselves, but it's definitely something we'd want to address, you know, with the trays. Okay. All right. So um, let me keep going through the commission. Um, Allison? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I just am curious to know if if you had all the money in the world and you were to do this again, this installation, would you have put those on concrete? Never. Concrete pad. This is yes. a terrible install. I'm not going to lie to you. What? No. Yeah, we would we would have raised them up. We would have put them in conduit. We we would have we would have raised them up. We would have put them in conduit. We learned lessons from this installation. This was very early on okay. um, in okay, our commercial so, installs. So yeah, because it seems to me like this is this was predictable. This problem, um, especially in a dump where there were. I mean, I lived in Needham. I was born in Needham, and I used to be the old dump, which was a completely open landfill, and there were so many rats and so many fox, so many animals. It was and so many seagulls that it's so predictable if you just put gravel down and you have you know, this field around it, it's just, it's stupid that it was done this way. Never mind. It just, it just, it, it annoys me. So going back to the whole Roundup business and with the glyptophosphate, which is what you're gonna have to be using at a high level, if it's any woody material, you're gonna have to do this every, all, you know, every, for the rest of the life of this facility. And that's my problem. This is not a one-time thing. This is forever that it exists. And I have a problem with that forever. A one-time thing, you know, do it a couple of times. I mean, I mean, if this, you know, I mean, there is such a thing as pulling out a weed by hand, you know, it can be done. <laughs> you don't have to use chemicals. Um, you can suffocate it. You know, you could put tarp down, you know, like um, plastic down on top of it. It's just, it's just, a, it just, a, it could be a huge amount of chemical. And the other question, wondering, I'm, you know, I've looked a little bit into it. There are critter meshes that you can put around places. I know you have to get at things, but there are such things, you put them in the ground, you put them over it. I mean, did you ever look at any of that kind of thing to stop them from living underneath these? Because that's, you're, no amount of glyptophosphate yes, is gonna stop a rat yes, or a chipmunk or a squirrel from moving in under there. They're gonna do it anyways, if you don't have the barrier, we, right? We yeah, absolutely. Am I wrong? And, and we've, I, I would say we're really approaching this as a, a last resort after years and years of trying to mitigate this in, in the most responsible. You have a mesh? Do you have some kind of a barrier? Yeah. Yes. The picture, the picture up on, is this what you're talking about? Oh, I see. So they get in that through the yes. mesh? Yes. Yes. They, what, what kind of mesh is it? What is it? It's, is it plastic? It's, no, it's, it's chicken wire. It's metal. That's, is it is it galvanized? Yes. They bite through the galvanized wire. They sure do. And it's not rusted. It's just that they bite through it. Oh, well, maybe it needs to be a heavier gauge. I don't know. I mean, it seems to me that there could be a way. We of... installed it less than a year ago. You found the places where they bit through it. I right. Yep. This is the. When I when I was when I was asked, like Tesla could figure this out. You know, <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, but when when this was being common, when this was uh, you know ten minutes ago, we were talking about this, it wasn't that they were chewing through it; is that they were finding ways to get into it at the mm -hmm. end of at the end of this it's run when they're hitting the inverters, where the where the mesh has to open up so the wires and go to the inverters. They were getting into it this way. Now all of a sudden they're biting through this. They have found 
it's impossible to tell uh, often how they're getting in. Uh, we just find the corpses. Um, I found them halfway down the cable tray. I found them right in the cable tray. We've sealed every hole. We've wrapped the entire tray in fencing. We have a fence around the entire area. We've tried everything to, to mitigate this. Um, okay, well, I ourselves. mean, I think you could try uh, Again, we used electronic pest repellents, pelletized pest repellents. Could we could put up cameras up there. We could put up trail cameras and see how they're getting in. Just we have stuff. them. We have them. Oh, we so do. you see yeah, how they Yeah, there's a family of turkeys that lives there and doesn't chew the wires. Um, yep. Yep, they, well, they, they're able to get through the fence, under the fence, oh, and now they're oh. habiting there and they're living there. Yeah, well, killing the grass isn't going to stop the rats from coming in. It's not, because it's a nice, warm little place under the rain. You know, it's jaded. They're going to go live in there. That's not going to stop them. It's not going to work. I wish you, I mean, it just not, I mean, no, any reasonable person would know that this isn't going to work. Well, I wish it would. I wish it was a magic bullet, you know, well, but it's, I don't think it's going to work. To your point, if it, if it doesn't work, we can stop, right? Because it's, and not do it forever. And then additionally, what would happen is it would allow us to access these trains a lot easier to repair the, the sections that they're getting into, as well as bring the system back online sooner, which of course benefits the town. Yeah, that's something else. That's another, that's that's completely different reason, not the little buggers are bothering you. It's because you want to have, you want to save money because it's easier to get in and take care of it. Right, and and you gotta be honest about this. You can't this just come in with the main reason. You have to give all the reasons. Yeah, yeah all the reasons. Absolutely. Yep, and and that's why we're here, right? You know, we're a business, and we we want to make money too. And and this is a partnership with the town, so the town benefits financially from this as well. But from a conservation standpoint, there's a real potential benefit of stopping animals from chewing on these wires, which is, you know, can you do a test run? And come back in a year and see and with 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 scientific data of quantities of how many were last year, you know, and how many are going to be this year after one round of two rounds of glyptophosphate. Yeah, I, I think we could, Ryan. We could we could probably do one spray this year. Look at the data from the year without and the year with, and see how many you know bunnies we find, and, and come back with that information. That sounds reasonable. We we could certainly show the differences in production of the system, but I'm not sure. Can anybody recommend a biologist to count rabbits for us? I, I, I don't know. I thought you said they were rats. No, rabbits. Rabbits. Oh. These are not rats. How do rabbits get there into no the rats. That's There are small. no rats. If I had the answer to that, I would... I, I would have a million dollars. I can't figure rabbits? out how they keep doing it. Doing it. Okay, um, so then they just, okay. they just rabbits. Getting in there after everything, rabbits. So you should invest in hawks. Is what you should invest in. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of coyotes <laughs> out there too. Do you know any fact? I mean, that would be more effective than glyptophosphate. I've seen the I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it will. There's how many rabbits? By all this beautiful wire we've installed, I don't know. Mm -hmm. How many applications in a year? But two do, maximum. That's all. That's all. We're just asking for two, and, and what, uh, as soon as as soon as we can, because it's getting bad now. And then uh, three months after that. I, I can I ask you a question. Why Why do you think this is going to stop the rabbits from getting in there? We just want them to go away. We want them <laughs> to find a new habitat. So I I want them to go. They won't go away. They like it under there. They're eating it. They're not going to go away. I'm sorry. Yeah, not, so but they, they. I know they rabbits. I had a rabbit for twelve suicide. years. Suicide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They love it. There. Why did they, they chew on wires? Can you, like, why do they chew on a live wire? <laughs> because yeah, we've seen it. We're building sites, because and we're laying out the pallets. They, they, they mess up there. That's yeah. why, because the canines well, keep growing. The same reason why squirrels chew on wires and the solar rays on roofs. They'll, they'll die if they don't chew. There's, there's, some, there's something in the coating that seems yeah. to taste like food. One question I have is going back to the graph. That was If you go back to the graph for a second. Okay, so that was what, 2020, going through 2020. Uh, what about years past? What's been happening with the array being taken <laughs> down? These arrays have been up there for... I don't know, 10 years now. Yeah, it might it might be worse than this. I don't have it prepared for you tonight, but I, 
I just thought 2020 would be enough to illustrate the point that the site's been losing an enormous amount of production. Um, but it's well, well I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, but also, work. yeah, but is, yeah, but is that, is that the wires being taken down all the time? Is that sometimes an inverter going down? It's, it's the wires being taken. It's down. almost never the inverter. Yeah. Every time it's a ground fault caused by something chewing on the wire. Um, I, I, I was a field tech for Tesla and for Solar City before it for six years. I'm the, I'm the guy in Massachusetts. So I've been on this side. You can see every time that that line touches the bottom, that, that system's offline because it's tripped a ground fault in that inver on that inverter. Actually, on both of them. Um, because they've chewed on one wire this side, one wire this side. So, oh, so, you're, so you're saying that the wire, the ground fault is causing the inverter, it's shutting the inverter down. Correct. So it's not, the, it's, not that, the, it's, it's, it's not that string coming, it's not the string going down, it is the inverter going down. Right, yeah, it's, it's the way- Why it's, between May and September- It's the inverter going down because this is a negatively grounded system, so it has to go down. Mm -hmm. But why between May and September? They must not have been chewing. I'm, I'm not sure. No, but that's when there are more rabbits. That's after they had their babies all summer long. There's there are more rabbits in the summer than any in spring and summer than any other time, and they're not eating. That doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't understand this graph. Yeah, I, I wish I knew what these crazy rabbits were doing. <laughs> well, maybe so, it's so, so. So what was the repair? So this was so we're talking about this last year. So, so what was the repairs? How many times were out there were the, were the repairs going on, and what, what exactly were the repairs going on then? Last it was year? at least twice a month. We were out there. It was almost always a ground fault, almost every time, and it was almost always caused by, um, you know, a uh, a chewed wire. Mm -hmm. um what's been happening is after they're chewing the wire because it's a negatively grounded system it is now causing major thermal events inside of the combiner boxes so if we keep leaving it i mean eventually the grass is going to take care of itself because the thing's going to be on fire um i could show you we have pictures of ground of these combiner boxes that are completely burnt out um because they're chewing through it causing a ground fault and then it's shorting out between the two conductors okay uh, and so are you catching Hold on, hold on. But but if, but if you're out there basically twice a month, um, out there fixing something, why why is the whole January through May affected, but not the whole May through September affected? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it comes down to part availability. So sometimes that fault fixes something for a part that we can we have in our trucks and sometimes we need to go back to the manufacturer and get a part and maybe the manufacturer isn't making it anymore. So usually extended periods of time like that are difficulty in, in finding and locating the, the part we need to bring it back up online. Okay. Are you um, okay. Okay. Well anyway it's anyway you gotta keep the array you, you gotta keep the array going. We know that it has to be kept going. It's just at some point you would think that Maybe the maybe maybe the maybe there is trays. If if the trays are ninety eight percent of the problem of what's going on, and they are taking there they are wiping out so much energy. And I do not believe these chemical sprays are going to greatly change that graph. If this is a normal graph, I don't see. How, I don't think they're going to greatly change that graph. It almost seems like the problem isn't the animals. The problem is the installation, and maybe the inst maybe this conduit tray should be changed to something different. But anyway. That's something for another conversation for another day. Sue, did you have a thought? I was just asking, are you are you catching any of this on the field cameras? We've caught some of the rabbits coming through, <laughs> the, the family of turkeys that lives up there. I have lots of great shots of them, um, but we're not actually, I haven't caught uh, the rabbit event um, when, the, when they die. Um, but what we do find is we do find, you know, their corpses afterwards. Peter, if I have, uh, yeah, Bill, do you have thoughts? Um, we're talking about getting rid of the vegetation, but is that going to get rid of the rabbits? I mean, if it's still holes in the fence, uh, they still could come in. They could be attracted to the wires. They could be using it for bedding. I, I don't know what, what's getting in there. That's just a thought. Um, do we ever consider goats, goatscapes or something to go in there and, and isolate areas to, for, to take care of vegetation? Um, and I don't know enough about predation, but is a fence pre preventing natural predators from going in there and taking care of business? Uh, those are my thoughts. I don't know if any answers. Yeah, so so I, I mean, 
I'm hearing skepticism um, in terms of the removal of the vegetation as a as a solution to the rabbit problem because rabbits are going to be using this as a shelter in the winter let's say uh, anyway even if it's even if there's not vegetation there um, and so given given the the hazards the, the use of glyphosate has um, when used in large amounts to a natural area like this. Um, I'm getting the sense that um, the, the commission, if you're asking for approval, I don't think the commission is is prepared to do it. I mean, I can, I can put this up to a vote. Um, Deb, is that what they're asking for? Or is this what you're asking for? You were just looking for directions or is, is this actually we have some jurisdiction over? Um, like I said, um, even if the area is outside, the chemicals can get washed down the rain to the wetlands. So you do have a say in, in whether they're allowed to, to use the chemicals or not. Um, so I think that if you voted against it, um, that that would, would hold. All right, so I'll entertain a motion. And this time we probably need to be specific about the wording of the motion. Well, I like the, I'll, I'll, I'll it's a motion. There we have a trial, a, a motion for a trial run of the herbicide over a very specific barrier of these trays leading from the arrays and they raise trunk, trunks going to the inverters, but not, not in amongst the array itself, not on the perimeter, outside the perimeter, just just in this area, which seems to be the problem area. And it's just from these big wire trays. A one-year trial and see what happens. All right, do I hear a second? Okay, doing that. Okay. All right, so discussion on this one. Um, so Allison, this seems like a reasonable. It does, I, I just want there to be, you know, non-biased, careful documentation. Um, right. You know, and over, you know, over, if we could go back a year before this, it would be good to see that too. And how many rabbits did you actually catch and see get electrocuted? <laughs> And um, it would be, and how many times you inspect it for, you know, for rabbits. I mean, just having it be a little bit more rigorous um, because if it does turn up that you have a good test and you're, you really back it up well with good data, that's, you know, very good unbiased data, real data, and that there's a chance that it could continue. So I think that, that, that's, that that's fair to do that that way. So do you want like pre, um, pre-use kind of a, um, a baseline? Yeah, a baseline. I mean, they may, I don't know if they have a real baseline of how many, I mean, it, 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 I see every time it hits the bottom, it's supposed to be a, 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 ra a rabbit, I don't know if that really is true or if it's something else can cause that, maybe some kind of a, maybe there was one rabbit and then it shorted another thing two weeks later. I mean, I don't know how, I'm not an electric, I'm not, you know, I don't know how. So what is the effect of the chemical on wildlife? Um, other well, it's, well Roundup doesn't last that long, thank God. I mean, I think it's like, you know, at most a year. Um, it's not like very, very persistent. Um, it, it's more the, the wetland and how it's quite a distance. If it's done like what um, already said in that, you know, just around the wires and the, you know, the array where mm -hmm. it's wrapped, that, that, that oh, that's yeah. limited, you know, but that's, that's sort of the main place where it sounds like there's been damage, repeated damage. So and the other areas would just be mowed around. Would the just be mowed, and I like the I like the 
Bill's idea of goats. You said ghosts, didn't you, Bill? <laughs> ghosts. You, you cannot use goats. Goats treat goats see. chew wires worse than rabbits. We've used them on other facilities. <laughs> you kill every goat that goes there. But, but, with, with, I don't know. With, I like the idea of goats. That sounded kind of good. With, uh, we with, use with sheep in Hawaii, but the goats you cannot use on solar rays. We use sheep okay, in Hawaii and in Portland, okay. New York. All right. Uh, yeah. I know it strategic. Hot, I've seen strategic. <laughs> I've seen strategic fencing put up so it can take areas. I mean, you could keep them away from the from the condo or the wires. But, yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. It was it was goats, not yeah. ghosts. This array is at ground level. It can yeah. we hire some coyotes to come in for the rabbits? Yeah, yeah. Yep, that would be nice. Yeah. So, so I, I guess what already said, but it just just done in a way that that it's. It's use the data is useful and it would be interesting to see. I'd be interested to see. I'm very, very, very skeptical that it's going to make much of a difference. About this many. But I think it's but I think we have to give you a chance because you you're desperate. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, there's not another way we do have to look, we do have to look at it this way as well. And that is solar energy is has a lot of value to it for the environmental aspect. Yeah. Obviously, we don't want to kill, we don't want to kill lots of animals for that benefit. But it does have a benefit, so we have to find some way to mitigate what's going on, yeah, with, with minimizing the, the negative aspect of these herbs and have licensed people apply it and all that so they don't apply Absolutely. too much. And, no, it'll be at the it, right it, time, and you know, yeah. blah blah blah. Not too windy, doesn't blow down into the wetlands, you know. Yeah. It's mostly wetland stuff that gets gets trouble with the with the glyptophosphate because they're the 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 reptiles and fish. So does it make a difference if they use rodeo or roundup? Well, if, it, if it's wetland. wetland, it's going in the water, then it then it then it has a surfactant on it, and it does make a difference. But but I think this is so far away that I don't think it's going to make a difference. I don't think you have to use rodeo because you're not right in the wetland or right next to the wet. You know what I mean? Right there uh -huh. in the water, you're not going to have overspray, especially if it's done properly. Um, okay. So I think I think just don't do it on a windy day, and you know. Yep. Absolutely. What about rain? Does it travel in, in storm water? You're supposed to, you're not supposed to do it. I think you have to wait. You have to make sure there's not going to rain for a couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mostly because it's got to get into the plant. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's, gonna, you, we're, it's going to be a micro, micro dot application. So when you, as, as somebody used to spray this, you want to do it on the driest day and you want to use very, very, the smallest particles you can. Exactly. But again, this is uh, this is only going to be sprayed on the wire trays. This is only in the wire trays on the inside of the array, the inside quote A area, inside the array, going to the inverters, and it's not going to be used in a, in amongst the array itself, and not on the outside perimeter, just the inside trays. That inside A, let's call it, if you will, right yeah. there. If we can, we'd like to request if it is poking up in one or two spots and within like the main section of the array that we can use it there as well. If, if I don't, what I don't understand is if this is like a weed or a little plant poking up, what the hell? How could you pull it? Just, just pull the damn thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Why does it have to be chemical all the time? You can pull it. Just pull the damn thing. As you pull it, you're, you further damage the weed mat, and now you're going to have more vegetation growing. It's also 30 acres. Well, this is going to be a problem. You're going to have to do Roundup for the rest of its life. And so it better work. <laughs> oh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's 30, it's 30 it acres. Doing it twice a year, three times a year for, for 20 years yeah, for this size of an area. If, yeah, if there's wheat man under all that area, they better, it's just, it's just, it's untenable. It's untenable, in my opinion. It doesn't work. It's not, it's, it's got to be re, look, you know, it's got to be, you got to put concrete under it. I don't know. Could we discuss using a pre-emergent herbicide? I mean, the issue is, is that yeah, anything other yeah, than I mean, glyphosate is going to be, it's going to be a registered pesticide. Better than a, than a Roundup. Yeah, it is. But it's, it, but the pre-emergence are registered pesticide. Well, they How have. How is that better? better. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, as far as I know, I've never heard potentially causing cancer in humans. Whereas Roundup is, you know, now ha, you know it's. it's well, they have. It, it most certainly does cause cancer, ma'am. Uh, pre-emergent cause cancer in, in humans. 
they've been one account of Roundup glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. No, like it, Roundup, it's, it has a it has a caution warning label on it, no, which I'm means it's it's a carcinogen. Uh, Roundup. Yeah, well, Roundup. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. But I'm talking about pre-emergent. Roundup is a post-emergent herbicide. Oh, yeah, I know it is. But you said, how about yes, a pre pre every pre-emergent herbicide I've ever worked? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I, I was asking if, if we use. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah. All right. So so let me bring this back. So we have a motion uh, of a limited um, test a year to see how it works on a very limited area, um, not anywhere else in the array at this point um, to, to see if this works. Um, we are not approaching this. this. This motion doesn't include the use of Roundup as a vegetation management. Uh, this is specific to address the complaint that you have about, uh, about rabbits and whether this can be a solution to that particular problem. Um, so that's the motion on the table. Any more discussion about, about that motion? Peter. Yes, Peter. I, I just wanted to say that I, I totally agree with everything that's been proposed. But I also would love to see a uh, plan B in the workings. Which is? I don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> it, it would be up to, it would be up to um, you guys. Yeah, I mean, my, my sort of take on this is that uh, if this is, con if this is a test and it doesn't work, that there will have to be a plan B. Um, and it's not our job to come up with that plan B. But the, the other is that um, uh, in a year, basically they need to convince us that, that this has worked. So we're also not in a position of, of supplying the specific metrics um, and you know, credibility of results is based on you know, whether the observations are, are credible you know, third party observation. So, so that would be the burden of the applicant um, in this so case. So do we, do we need them to give us the name of the company or individual who's gonna be monitoring this? That's gonna be giving us results next year as far as the mortality and, and that type of stuff? Or we just want to leave it up well, to them. Well, Debbie, well, Debbie, one thing we need is we need, and the town has probably supplied this. We need the town is likely supplied with the generation from this array. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know if they have logins for daily, but they're probably very, very probably supplied monthly results of what this what this array is producing. Uh -huh. So we need to have some comparative, some comparison going on. If if we're going to be the ones giving approval, not approval for this, then. It would be valuable to have that information as far as what the what, we, what is happening with the production, but that information coming with the same information the town is getting, which is their monetary the monetary return to the town is based on that production. Right, I'm talking about a biologist or or something. You're talking about, you're talking about for the the, the dead bed, for the yeah. lack of a better word, the dead bunnies. Yeah, dead, correct. So, so are you are you familiar with services that might be able to do this kind of work? What biologists that would do monitoring of this? They do that sort of monitoring, yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, if it's simply just a count, you know, if they're removing these rabbits on a regular basis, I would think that they could keep a tally, like a monthly tally of what they were removing, um, to submit to us in a year and yeah, see so if it has gone down. So that might be a pretty easy way of of demonstrating. Right. And then you want to give them a certain timeline next year that you want to hear feedback by, right? Yes. So when would the first application uh, occur? Next week. We've been, yeah, we've been, we've been waiting on, on your approval to begin. So you so have the approval from all the other um, departments. Yes. I know Hank Half yep. was Department of Environment. No, I mean in the yeah, town. DEP is signed off. No, in the town. Hank uh, Half, 
Um, Oliver, did you get that? Approvals. Yeah, we, um, the Tatiana brought in um, a few other people from the town and they all kind of basically said, check with the commission and if they give their okay, then. All right, because I've seen some emails going back and forth with Hank Half. Um, right. And, you know, he had concerns. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone else has signed off on this. Yeah, if you give me a list of who needs to be signed off, I could check um, who we have the approvals with to make sure that that all lines up. But well, I'll send out an email to everyone and let them know the commission discussed it and their thoughts on it and um, see if we get any feedback. Because there is also um, the town's integrated pest management plan where they have what um, chemicals and herbicides are approved to be used. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure that this has to go through them to some degree as well. All right. I think you sent that over to me. I'm pretty sure what we're recommending is, but Okay. Hmm. One, we... one objective source of data that we can certainly show the town as well. We, we may not have a good baseline. We haven't been measuring how many rabbits. So we can, of course, measure during the upcoming year, but a good baseline of that is completely unbiased is the amount of electricity produced and how much the site's going down. And I think that's something that where we win, the town also wins. It's kind of a, it's a good metric in the sense that it's, it's there's no way to fudge that. Right, I, I, right. So, so a combination of two. Uh, right. so to, I mean, obviously the end is to generate electricity. The medium that you're claiming is the sort of mechanism for why it's going down is the rabbit population. So right. we right. need to make sure that that's correlated, um, that when the rabbit population goes down, that, that, that actually is, you know, correlated. So, so I think both metrics would be appropriate in this case. Um, so yeah, Deb, if, if, I mean, it, if you have some ideas or if they want have, you know, some ideas, it makes sense to get a biologist involved, uh, at some level to, to both do counts, but also to investigate, uh, the situation as well. Um, uh, all right. Any other discussions before we proceed to a vote? Any amendments to this uh, motion? All right, I will proceed then. Um, all in favor, Sue? Aye. Allison? Aye. Bill? Do we second the motion? I think it was seconded, yeah. Okay, yeah. second. Okay, aye. Artie? Aye. Peter? Aye, I guess. Um, so, uh, so. Well, why don't I'll write something up that reflects um, what we're looking for and um, the requirements. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll send it around to everybody. If I get any comments back, um, I'll let you know. Okay. But Perfect. that work? Thank that you. Works. All right. Thanks, folks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I know it's a tough job dealing with the uh, dealing dealing with these large arrays. I know it's a lot of work. I'm been there, been there doing that. You know, it's a lot of work. Appreciate it. Yep. We're I think Thanks, we're we're trying to create a win for both here. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um, that's it for the agenda, right? I think so. Yes. You. Well, wait. Well, yes, but you have uh, the exhibit A and the voting for that. Oh, that's oh. Right. And waivers. Spoiled right. again. So we cannot <laughs> move to adjourn, though most of what we did tonight was uh, um, continued. Um, so uh, in terms of signing, anything urgent? Uh, 
or should we just do the routine, wait for the weekend and go to Janet's garage if we can get in? Yeah, no, nothing urgent. I will, um, I'm hopefully going to need them tomorrow. So I'll let you know when they're there, but you have to review it and such an issue. Exactly. So let's look right. at the exhibit. It was emailed to people um, not long before the meeting. Exhibit My A. Clay sent it out. I also have it pulled up. Yeah, I have it. Were there two, were there could, two waivers that were requested? Yeah, can I, can I just, so uh, immediately had a question. So in the project proposal, the proposed project consists of work to do, 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 do two-tiered patio. The upper patio is, is proposed impervious while the lower patio is located, is proposed to be pervious. Oh, I thought there was a mistake there. Upper tier. Did you oh, read I see. Them? No, it, it's in the findings of fact. Sorry. Upper tier will be impervious. The lower tier will be impervious. I think that's the mistake. In the first. And in your annotated of, agenda, Peter, um, yes. DEP had comments on this. Um, yes. So, um, I can bring that up. Hold on a second. And we're we're not sure when the time timing was, but um, as Deb noted, DEP issued the following comments: Mass DEP recommends the commission require a greater minimum minimum setback of proposed activities to the intermittent stream and BBW and the restoration of natural vegetation, trees, shrubs, and herbaceous in the setback, as allowed by ten point five three. Um, so this is unclear whether it was the original or whether it was the revised plans with the patio. So Diane back. did not send them the revised plan. So this is based on the original plan. Okay. So it has been pulled back. It has been made pervious. Made pervious now. And there is um, mitigation plantings. So, but I just okay. wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay. Very good. Um, anything else? So on this um, draft exhibit A, it's it goes through the requirements um, or the summary of work, which is the two two tiered patio and walkway, the small extension of the backup area in the driveway, um, the installation of the subsurface uh, stormwater unit and the additional plantings. And it also makes reference to the conservation restriction as required by the previous order. Um, so that there's a, another record of why those bounds are in and that the new plantings have to be outside those bounds that essentially the mitigation for this is an extension of that mm -hmm. area. <clears throat> the special conditions are primarily the stock special conditions um, included <clears throat> was that they, uh, We'll be planting the mitigation plantings within the 25 foot buffer zone um, with the annual reports, two years monitoring with the 75% survival rate with the 85% live wood. Um, at the completion of the two year monitoring, they come back and they can get the, the full CSC after that. They will also have to have the as built um, plans and, and engineers narrative and uh, Everything else is still still in there uh, that we use kind of stock everywhere else. There's somebody that will have to observe the soils before the stormwater unit goes in. Now, technically, they did dig the holes for the stormwater test pits um, during this application process, but we will just have to make sure that that they they submit that to us um, for final confirmation that they're not running into groundwater or high groundwater in that area. Okay. Seems reasonable. So do we need to do the waivers first or does that come after the, the order? I think you do it first. You, you, right, because the then, then it gets entered into the order. Okay, so um, I need a motion to, they've requested obviously work within the 25, which is the mitigation plannings. Um, the small portion of the, of the pervious. Well, oh, that's right. So the pervious paper is also within, that's right. So, um, so a waiver to, to do that pervious pave, paving uh, patio. 
Um, all right. Uh, motion? Mo motion to issue the waiver. Is that what you said? Sure. Yep. I make, a mo I make a motion to issue a waiver for work. Second. 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 Uh, all right. Uh, all in favor. Sue? Aye. Artie? Aye. Allison? Bill? Allison. Aye. I think we'll, you're we'll muted. Just... It says it's <laughs> not. It says it's open. There you are. It seems like it's a lag. If you say one word, it's almost like the computer doesn't pick it up. Oh, it's always canceling it or something. That's what it is. OK. Oh, you're right. It's you're being noise canceled. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so we have the waiver, um, and then the fee they requested to to waive the waiver fee. Uh, in this case, do you think it's warranted? What, uh, Devin Clay? Do you? What's your recommendation? You just unmuted uh, muted yourself, Deb. It's late. Um, I think that since they're putting patio in the 25 foot that you should at least charge them something. Maybe not the whole 1000, but generally you waive the waiver fee when it's just planting. But the- Did they Move it back though. Didn't they move it back? Oh, 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 from the yes, Sue, well, they but to. it's still in the 25 foot. They oh, it did, is? They, okay. Yes, it is. Okay. They, they really didn't have a choice. Um, <laughs> So uh, um, I would propose $500. Does that sound reasonable? That's good. All right, motion. Uh, second. I second. All in favor, Sue? Aye. Artie? Aye. Bill? Aye. Allison? Aye. Peter, aye. All right. So we waive five hundred dollars of the waiver of the uh, wait of the fee. Okay, um, and then uh, no more changes to the uh, order of conditions. So a motion to uh, issue. No more. Uh, second. I second. All right. All in favor. Sue? Aye. Artie? Aye. Bill? Aye. Allison? Aye. Peter? Aye. Okay. So uh, that order is uh, complete and we're still waiting on the other COC, um, but that's a separate issue. All right. Yeah. Um, boy. Okay. This was a late one. I know it was. Mm -hmm. Ah. Motion right. to adjourn. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Yes. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Just wave Aye. your hands. It's fine. Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.